I ain't never eaten an ass. But <laughs> <laughs> if I had to guess, <laughs> if I had to guess, I packed something special. Get a little something I, special. Because yeah. I, I want all you guys to feast your eyes. <laughs> oh on my this. lord! I'm I'm leaving. Leaving. I didn't know. Phil, I hate all of you. Phil, what size? <laughs> what size wheels are those Miata? They're round. <laughs> Michigan State Police car come up, come pulling up, and we're like, oh shit, here we go. Welcome everybody back to Oil and Whiskey and Ironclad Original. Tonight we are going to be answering some listener questions. We've also got Jesse Greening, actually in person, in the Jesse flesh, Greening, right here in studio. <laughs> Live uh, and on stage. <laughs> and, of course, our in the, gra- in the glove box. In the glove box segment. Uh, but before we get to the interview, first it's time to take some of your questions. We're going to l- go through some of the listener questions that have been posted up on social media. And uh, since we've got Jesse in studio, he's going to be a part of this as well. So he's going to get yeah, to he answer gets, He gets wow. to field. They get the celebrity <laughs> guest answers to some of these <laughs> questions, too. Absolutely. Uh, probably not going to be worth a damn, but we'll give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, if you got more questions for future shows, just follow us on Instagram at Roadster Shop and comment on the post about podcast questions. So first question up, what got you guys into cars and why are you still interested in cars to this day? Who wants to go first? Yeah, I think we all ended up in this. We probably all have the same answer in that we just like weren't smart enough to stay in school or do something more intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a huge part yeah, of that's, it. That's <laughs> that's a big part of it. Uh, I I guess mine was probably just being around dad so much in the garage and him working on the cars and and uh, I always enjoyed seeing what was out there in the magazines, everything else. And so hell, I was like, that's what I want to do. And and uh, he always supported it. Him and mom both. And and uh, here we are. Yeah, I think ours is the same deal. It wasn't really like hot rods as a kid. It was more building dune buggies, sand rails, all sorts of toys, and then that just evolved into doing some muscle cars, some hot rods. But it's definitely, uh, definitely something that's handed down. Yeah. Born into it, gasoline in the veins, and passing it down to our kids to do the same thing. Hopefully, they get a little smarter at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully we all can hand something a little better off to them that, that we didn't get handed off to us or something. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> a head start with it anyway. How about you, Josh? I know a little bit about your early years of, of car building. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got started? What inspired you? Fast, well, Fast and the Furious came out way later, <laughs> so it couldn't have been that. But. Yeah, I, I definitely I wasn't born. <laughs> Although it still fuels it. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> I wasn't born into it at all. I remember from probably around eight or nine years old uh, drawing cars um, and picking up, you know, a few magazines here and there and seeing what was what was possible. And on the custom side of things, it was it was just the uh, the freedom to basically do whatever whatever you wanted to do. And that was, I guess, what was intriguing to me is there was uh, no rules. I was definitely had a little bit of trouble following rules or uh, kind of doing what you're supposed to do. So looking at that as uh, a hobby and future career that you could do so it's whatever almost, the hell you wanted to do. It's almost got a little bit of like the counterculture skateboarding. Something yeah, like that. it was just kind of like, yeah, you know what? Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, and then, I mean, as far as what's why I'm still into it, I mean, it's it's still the same thing. It's still, it's still, <laughs> <laughs> it's still the yeah. not being able to follow rules. <laughs> Uh, so next, next question, uh, what's the best business advice you've ever received? Hmm. Cash is king. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, really? So, I mean, you gotta, you know, I don't know, keep your reserves up best you can and go from there. So, yeah. I've, and I hear that straight across the board from very successful, uh, customers. So but, uh, that's probably the single one. Yeah. I think for me, it's, uh, I was told once just do something, even if it's not right, which means not like sitting around and thinking about it and waiting for the perfect answer. Just like get going, do something, and then figure it out as you go. I don't have a good quote. Really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to put it in quote form. It could just be. <clears throat> Yeah, mine was. I mean, my my that one actually came from. That was I was screamed at. That yeah. was spoken quite loudly. <laughs> at me. <laughs> um, I don't know. One that resonates probably the uh, 
perfection paralysis. Don't be so focused on making it a thousand percent correct that you can't do anything else moving forward. You got to jump and figure out how to fly a little bit on the way down and refine as you go and improve as you go. It's not going to be perfect the first time. Just learn from your learn from your mistakes. Learn how to make it better and keep moving forward. Mine would be uh, I got two, but they're kind of the same. One, don't ever let anybody outwork you. Um, and then you got to get up in the morning to get up in the world. Those, yeah. Both That's from my one. both from my yeah. granddad and. You know, at that point, I definitely didn't want to get up in the morning. And that was, <laughs> this is, this was, is, there's another one I, that makes me think of that. It was, you know, you're a you're a Jesse James, right? As a middle uh, yeah, you actually I am, that? yeah. But like the Jesse James, right. you remember when I don't know if it was on one of his shows or something. He said something about waking up in the morning, and he used to like get up and sit in traffic on his way to work, and it was just like bumper to bumper with the shitty cars. And they started getting up early at like four thirty, five o'clock in the morning. And there's no traffic, and it's just like Mercedes, BMWs, oh, higher yeah. end cars on the road. And it like clicked that, well, yeah, dude, these guys, like, there's higher end, nicer, more expensive cars yeah. on the road because these They're dudes successful. are up early, That's getting right. asked to work and getting moving. That was. I've never heard that one. That was really Yeah, good. I don't remember where. That one. I hadn't heard that one. probably me a little bit too in a different uh, way because I'm not a morning person. So I just kind of roll in at nine o'clock and miss traffic coming <laughs> after that. That's true. <laughs> yeah. There's, that's the second slug of nice cars coming <laughs> that's, that's in. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It comes in shifts. You just don't want to be like right a, there in the middle. It's like a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> a shit sandwich. Because <laughs> you got all the shit shit's cars right in the middle. middle. <laughs> and you got the early guys and the late guys and the nice cars. So, yeah, yeah, I that's, get it. That's yeah. a good way yeah, of looking at it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next one. This one's a little different. Um, probably going to have to take some time. Maybe somebody will have it off the top of their head. Um, if you could have dinner. With anyone, dead or alive, who would it be? Mm. Damn, that is a, that's a deep one. Mm-hmm. Mm. The cow that you're eating. <laughs> <laughs> that's deep. It's, it's a little twisted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mine's non-car related. Um, it's a uh, Pat Benatar. Are you still Waylon Waylon Jennings? Oh. Oh, yeah. You're gonna say that. Yeah. It's I mean, that he's got to have some stories, and then what better way to hear some of those stories over dinner? That's it's funny that you want to talk about quotes. I actually screenshotted this today, this morning. That's a coincidence. Let me just scroll, <laughs> scroll through all the filthy stuff here. I'm <laughs> to get through that. <laughs> this was a picture of Waylon, and it just simply says, "Don't ever try to be like anyone else, and don't be afraid to take risks." Hmm. Waylon Jennings. That's good. So that's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. Good timing. But you'll never be as cool as Waylon, so all that would do is make you like feel like lesser of a man <laughs> oh, <laughs> sitting <yeah>. next to him. <laughs> Listening to his music makes <laughs> me feel less, lesser than a man, but I'd still love to have dinner. Uh, what What about you two? Mine was similar because I think Johnny Cash would be. It's like the two of them, I think, is the epitome of cool. Right. Yeah. And again, it's the stories. It'd just be cool. Yeah, it would be cool. It wouldn't be real deep, just super fucking cool to hang yeah. out. Um, yeah, we're, we're extremely shallow. We're yeah, just, yeah. Right, yeah, right there, on, right there on the surface. Yeah, yeah. It is. <laughs> going cool factor. Yeah. Man, do you know Phil? Because I don't know. I, yet. Yeah, I don't that's know. A tough question. I'm not really a talker or about? into that kind of shit. So <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Uh, Maybe you could just like sit at a far and listen to him <laughs> speak. You wouldn't have to engage. Bad idea. Yeah. How about Jordan? Fucking MJ. It'd be pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. That'd be a good. That's one. a guy I like listening to talk. Even though I know nothing about sports. <laughs> <laughs> so you just take that ball and just you just like throw you just it up there. Throw and that and thing right in that net, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> right. And you get a few points. <laughs> do a field goal. <laughs> three, field goal. Knock it out of the park. You know whatever <laughs> you, do, you do. But he's I, an interesting I, guy. Cool businessman. A lot of very motivational. Great success story. I think that would be cool. I'm gonna go Elon Musk. Yeah, that's a damn good one. Yeah, that'd be fun because there's interesting stories there. Yeah, and all and the stories the of and... all of his shit happening and the way he pulls it off, and that would be a good one. I just feel like he's just out there on some of the oh, shit. I, like, yeah, where do you so come too. up with yeah, that and then turn that into a you know, building flamethrowers? I saw I saw uh, a thing where he was uh, fun in his. Or he, he rented out his house in college or something for an, as a nightclub, 
so he could pay the rent there. I think it, I could be a little bit wrong on that, but I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he's he was entrepreneur from an early early age, very early age. So that was cool. So just keep in count. That's Johnny Cash, yep. Waylon Jennings, and Elon Musk. Yeah, and I've got I've actually got a car that's, one. That's what do you decent? got? Oh, I got, what do you got? I got a car one. Uh, Christian von or uh, Koenigsegg. Oh uh, yeah, that would be a good one. I, I admire that dude and what he's done and and how he's done it over the years and and um, yeah that would be a that'd be a good sit down that, that, would, that cool. would that's a that's he's like an Elon he, he Musk very much is very, yeah like a especially in the car savant. world yeah. I mean that dude's I remember Cedric. watching that there was some documentary on yeah. on him that was just like it makes you feel like you suck I know oh you know? yeah yeah <laughs> look at that and you're like <laughs> he's just like what the oh, fuck Jesus. have I been like, doing been, all these years yeah. <laughs> look at, I built some chassis <laughs> <laughs> cars this guy's like holy yeah. shit <laughs> flailing away here <laughs> doing nothing <laughs> yeah that, that that'd be pretty cool he's um yeah admired his stuff seen seen a lot of his cars in person over the years and and um is just floored by him every time and then whenever you read about some new technology he's coming up with, it's yeah. like, holy shit, how do you come up with that? And, and um, you know, really, we're, you know, usually you come up with something because there's a need for it. But, you know, he's just dreaming up stuff. Right there. See about that. Bam. Now, see about that. Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the back of his throat. Yeah. Yeah. I'm choking. Yeah, Josh. he that dude but is yeah, that dude is crazy. Like you said, that's the most impressive because it's not like he's not trying to keep up with all right, there's this motor and these guys are doing this, so I need to make this. It's yeah. like he you are, he's already making the oh, most yeah, badass I know. I know. He, hyper yeah, doing supercar. Two hundred and fifty miles an hour, not yeah. in a yeah. Toyota Camry there. That's right. And uh yeah, because he he had he had an electric motor. I think I saw posted up somewhere, and you know, it's just a tiny little thing, and it's making more power than any Tesla ever has. Or anything. he's yeah. like he's taking that concept and just shoved it way out there, and it's like wow, that's crazy. So, yeah, pretty neat stuff. I think he broke the mold too on like the kind of almost like cookie cutter supercar yep. shape and template. Oh yeah, I mean everything is like derivative of a. 488 Ferrari. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's yeah like or the or the Lamborghini stuff. You know, any yeah. of the Lamborghini stuff. You know, it's just got that weird. And then all of a sudden, there's this weird. It's not really weird shape. Well, it kind of is in the against those. It's it's right. different. It's kind of its own thing. Yeah, he's cool, dude. Yeah. All right, y'all are Jesse wins. Yeah, y'all got yeah. some better ones. I think that was good to see the like we had the intellect. You could see like picking Elon Musk, and then we just want to fucking party. So we're out, we're out there smoking <laughs> and drinking with Johnny Cash and Waylon Jennings. Yeah. And these guys are like building supercars and getting schooled by the world's most wealthiest guy. Yeah. Well, uh, so be it. To each their own. It. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Well. For nearly 20 years, Jesse Greening has led Greening Auto Company, a muscle car shop he founded with his father, Jeff Greening. Over the years, the shop has taken home numerous awards. We're probably going to hear about some of those awards tonight since we always hear about those awards. I think awards. we should admit yeah, those yeah, awards. You're definitely going to hear about them. <laughs> <laughs> Including the Ford Design Award for their 72 Maverick, the Chip Foose Best Paint Award, the Good Guys Golden Brick Award, the Sony Gran Turismo Award, and they took Second place in the 2016 SEMA Battle of the Builders. We made no mention of the Riddler Awards <laughs> whatsoever. But there's because several I figured, of them. Yeah, there's, there's more than one. Uh, <laughs> you can check out their work at greeningautocompany.com or on Instagram at Greening Auto Company. Jesse Greening, welcome to Oil & Whiskey. Hey, thank you, guys. Glad to be here. Glad to be here in person. This Thanks is cool. Coming, yeah, this yeah. is awesome. Dude. The, the yeah. first guest in person. Yeah. Yeah, I like it in person. It feels good. like someone else is doing it. <laughs> it does feel like someone else is doing it. Someone else is doing it. <laughs> so what's been going on? <clears throat> Not much. Actually, what brings me into the area is just a little bike show up in Milwaukee. So I um, decided to make, like we all do, a work trip out of maybe a, <laughs> a fun time trip. But anyway, so I thought I'd bring, bring a little project to you all to help us out with. And then... Um, uh, we tooled up to the uh, bike show, unloaded the bike, and then uh, back here for this. So, yeah. What's the What's the plan? If you can talk about that project, that little little beamer out there. What's yeah, What's going beamer. on with that? <clears throat> well, we're um, yeah out of our wheelhouse, and I'm super excited about it. So, because it's not a '69 Camaro, <laughs> <laughs> something like that, you know. Um, but anyway, we uh, just a little different. We've got a good customer out of Atlanta, Terry, and um, 
he's letting us kind of run wild on a few projects and and with y'all's help we get to put some good chassis under them and get them to where they can perform and, and ride well and uh, this one we're going to use some m power in it and uh, trans as well so that's all different for us we have a uh, uh, friend and tuner in nashville uh, aaron at karma performance the he's, modern m3 yeah, m5 m3 v8 so and uh uh, you know, they're dual overhead cam motors, and uh, I don't know all that much about it. I'm about to learn a bunch about them, I think. But uh, anyway, Aaron, he's got them to where he can control them, and then the transmission's a seven-speed dual clutch uh, paddle shift transmission, so it's it's real deal. So we get, and he's got stuff that'll control that as well. So so here we go. We're going to go down this rabbit hole of trying something different than an LS and a 4L80 <laughs> or something like that. So That's going to yeah. be awesome. Yeah. I was excited to hear that because you're so accustomed to the LS swap. And I, like when you dropped it off, that was the first thing I said. I'm like, oh, the LS swap would be so predictable. It would. But doing the DCT and actual M power, that thing's going to be yeah. pretty sick. I, I think it'll be I think it'll be really good. Well, you know, styling-wise and so forth, I'm studying up on the uh, – <clears throat> all the BM race heritage, you know, during those years and even before that, just to try and get a feel for them. And it's, uh, the BMW stuff, it's a little hard. It's not as easy as it can be with the Porsche, you know, the Porsche side of it. And uh, some of those you can just immediately get a feel out of them because I think because so many people are doing it aftermarket-wise. But, um, yeah, so it's, it's going to be a good challenge. I'm excited about it, something a little different. And, and uh, hopefully it'll... I don't know. Maybe it'll spark something in our industry I, that'll I that'll hope. grab some of these German cars and because they're out so. there, there's loads of them, and they're really cool looking stuff. So it's very cool looking. Yep. And yeah, that'd be sweet. Do you think on something like that? So we're gonna scan that whole car when you approach that. I'm assuming it's gonna get big. I mean, you start talking about BMW race heritage and stuff. Probably like box flares and yeah, yeah, massive track with something like that. Would you? How much of that do you think will end up being? designed in solid works or you think that's taking that scan do you think you'll build all that stuff off of that with yeah the chassis? I, I, think I think so it's gonna I, be a hands-on i don't know it'll probably be still a mixture of some of that stuff there's some there's some tooling that uh here soon i'll be able to catch up on that would let us you know do it fully cad modeled but i i think uh just right now it'll probably move a little quicker than before i obtain all that stuff so I mean, I can hire it in and so forth, but still, I can easily go over and build a fender flare over there and get it to look how I want it to look without having to do it all in CAD. But um, it might be worthwhile doing it all in CAD so that I have that in case it is something good yeah. and somebody else wants it later because those cars are available and they're out there. So you never know if somebody else is going to want to call you up, get the chassis, sure. call us up, maybe get the fender flares, <laughs> whatever's yeah. available out there That's for them. So. Pretty wild uh, mix of skill set in building something like this. And every time I take a customer through the shop, it's like we start up front and you're like, so here's where we CNC machine and you know, everything's done in CAD and designed. And then you hit in the back and you know here's a 1940s uh, Yoder power hammer and banging it out by hand. Yeah. Um, you touch on that a little bit where, you know, if, how do you learn the whole skill set of being able to design something, machine something, hand fabricate it, and kind of blend all those together? Uh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> you know, well, you're probably like the first guy, you know, at least as far as I know. I mean, there's like in our age group, which I mean, I I say that, but you're a little <laughs> you're a little older than careful me. careful now. <laughs> but coming up, coming up in the early years of this, I mean, you had like Boyd, who was mm -hmm. super. In, I mean, everything was machine control arms, yeah. wheels, but I feel like you were the first guy that was maybe, like, relevant and, like, on the cutting edge and super hip that was actually machining stuff. You just did not see a lot of it, but you you were like that guy. Yeah, was, so. uh, post, <clears throat> post Boyd era street rod machining in right. you know, the modern age. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's, I guess that's maybe way it played out but <laughs> i was just i always actually was always watching boyd and loved loved all that stuff and was just really truly fascinated about cnc machining and making something out of that out of this chunk of aluminum or steel or whatever so um yeah i dove into it bought some machines uh 
had a few good people, salesmen and support behind some of the stuff I was buying. So that helped me a bunch, but I uh, got it going. And then finally I got to where I, to a point and pushed it enough to a point where I could hire some good people around me that can do it way better than I can. And, um, and mo- those guys are all still with me today. So, and that was probably 15 years ago, 12 years ago. That's cool. And, uh, but yeah, so we, so that was just, and it opened up a lot of doors that I didn't realize were there once I got it. You know, I was like, oh, wow, I can kind of do some work for some other people that don't have these machines in their shop. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> they were trying to get it at regular machine shops that had the equipment, but they don't have the experience of working with these cars and these projects. So I could kind of lend, you know, that, um, I guess, skill set to it because I had been making stuff out of it by hand, everything else, and kind of know how it needed to look and come about. So, and I, I think Phil, that's where the blend came from, is because making, making all that shit by hand, and then all of a sudden now we can make it, make it, uh, make it through the computer and onto the CNC, and and uh, but you still kind of wanna sometimes keep that look to it that it was handmade part. So, yeah, but it, but it just is working better now, and it's more precise and duplicated. You know, you can duplicate it as well. So, yeah. how big of a, a part of the machining for other shops and making one-off parts how big of a part of your business is that i know you do a lot of stuff for us mm-hmm. um, it's it's uh, right now it's about 40 percent of it is what comes from that side of it and uh, and i hope soon to make that quite a bit more nice. so, into it and uh, and still be a little more selective and do more for uh, my dad and myself more for us and to help promote that side of it just in our own builds eventually here. I'll still have customers, but hopefully I, I get to be real selective with with who and, and when I do stuff for people. Nice. So. Well, I hope you keep the door open for us. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> over, the, over the years, I think about every, like, really high-end build we've done, you've had a part of it that's either been yeah. and wheels or various parts on it, but... Uh, and I can't tell you every time I get the call, I get really, I still get really excited about it. And then whenever I get to see the stuff out there that you guys have done, it's like, oh, holy shit! I'm so glad we were able to do some, no, do some of that work. Yeah, so that was cool. Charger wheels or the Catalina wheels are probably two of the coolest yeah. sets of wheels ever made. Yeah, because I, I saw those back downstairs with the car down in the in the showroom there, and I was like, oh shit! Yeah, I, I, I didn't forget about them, but it's just nice seeing them again. Yeah, you know, after yeah. a long time. I do hate getting the emails and phone calls from everybody who has <laughs> a eight log Pontiac. <laughs> right. they want them. <laughs> oh, they're it's, loaded up after <laughs> us too. <laughs> we send them all your way now. Yeah, it's, thanks. <laughs> it's a no, long it's conversation trying to like play it out yeah, nicely. Oh, it. they're extremely expensive. Yeah, they're very yeah. involved. A lot of plating. <laughs> it's like eighteen parts per wheel or twenty <laughs> right. parts per wheel. Uh, and then finally, you just gotta like rip the band aid off. And yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah, not yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah, no. <laughs> What, uh, for the right car, it's definitely the it, that's right the that's piece right. that sets it apart, and makes it unique, and yeah. that you're not going to see anywhere else. So, yeah. absolutely. Well, I, I think one interesting thing on that question I have is, how, how do you like working with shops? Because I know some of the wheels we've sent you like full blown models on, and as we've built the relationship <clears throat> and we've done more and more, it's gotten to the point now where it's like the Grand National wheels. I mean, I just send you a random. Like Google picture and be like, dude, like make them look like this. Yeah. What do you think? Do you want us to do anything, or you just handle them? And it's your style so kick ass that even like those. We got a Chevelle coming out. That do you do you like working that way better and having like yeah. the free <clears throat> range of design, or having somebody like just send you a file and say cut this? To be honest with you, it really doesn't matter. I mean, it's fine. It's it is fun just to have that free reign on it, but. Um, at the same token, I don't know the rest of the scope. I might see the rendering. Yeah. <clears throat> You've, I think, on the Grand National, we didn't. I don't know that you had a rendering on no. it. Did you? Yeah. So we we just kind of, but that was easy too because we wanted them to look like, you know, the the original Grand National. We just wanted to modernize it a little bit and then make it fit the car, of course. But the, and so really to be able to just wing it on that one that one was fairly easy just to do that you know and whenever you get on stuff like the charger was or the or the catalina you know that's that's good to have a little more input from y'all and you know because it's such a you know it's on a little bit larger scale so sure. it's it's uh <clears throat> not not so much more importance on it but it's just it's it, it's uh is it's more 
critical to the overall design of that car. Yep. And I know you guys are more tuned in with that because it's not a build that I'm doing. So that, you know, that's where I like the input from you on something like that, for sure. Nice. And same with other builders, so, or, or other, uh, just home, home builders, whatever guys who control in their own build or something like that. So yeah, definitely. Sweet. You've definitely, definitely got an eye and <clears throat> carved out a niche for yourself for sure. Thank Before you. we get too far down the path into modern days, um, we're we take it from the top. We've, we're, we've we're all, going. we've all been friends. I mean, for a long time, we've, we know each other really well. We know the the origin story, if you will. We like mm -hmm. to get the origin story for for the listeners. I mean, I, we know that, you know, you basically fell off the back of a milk delivery truck into Coleman, Alabama. <laughs> That's and started right. Building hot rods. <laughs> but uh, you know, for, for the listeners out there, and, like, you know, kind of take us back. We're, yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, born, raised, central Michigan. Uh, the name of the shop, Greening Auto Company, come from my great-grandfather, actually. And the reason it sounds like a car lot <laughs> name is because it was uh they they actually did sell um buick and chevrolet uh up through the years and i think it, uh up into the early 80s it uh the the dealership dissolved with my grandfather and his uncle and so the name went away you know for a while through the 80s and 90s and then uh late 90s early 2000s we Dad and I picked the name back up, and and um, and that's where it came from. But Dad hauled milk up there, hauled milk for from the farmer to the dairy, and uh, had two trucks. I drove for him, so drove semi truck between college and and um, you know because I had to be eighteen to drive, even though I was driving before that. <laughs> but uh, the statute limitations. That's, is fine. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, <laughs> that was like back in the sixties, seventies. Yeah, somewhere yeah. back yeah. in then. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah so then it got got to a point where dad needed to make a decision of either sell the route he had or get bigger and so that's where i came in uh, i was in college hating it trying to work on cars all i could in the garage behind the house and and uh you know the, the question was brought up to me hey do you want to haul milk do we want to grow this and and we probably could have done made a good living it would have been a hard living um uh, hell, he's working seven days a week, um, almost 12 hours a day when I didn't help out. And uh, finally I said, yeah, I want to work on cars. And so uh, mom's side of the family's from Coleman, Alabama. So that's that's the tie down there and what got us to go down there. And, and um, we knew Paul Atkins from magazines and stuff and found out, you know, he's in the same town mom and dad or grandma and grandpa were in. So we would go and visit him at times whenever hell I was in eighth ninth grade or something like that and go over and we first met him and and then finally I asked hey could I come sweep sweep the shop floor or something during summers for a couple of weeks you know so I go down and live with my grandmother and work for work for Paul some and I didn't sweep much he put me right to work on things so that was kind of cool <clears throat> and that was my first introduction dad always had street rods hot rods and uh, always painted and paint painting cars anything out in the shop we were always out there but um when i when i was able to be with paul that's whenever i got around some of the high-end cars um one of the first cars i got to deal with and and kind of help with was alan johnson's yellow 37 that he did one of his first cars and so I think he's man. He's a bunch older than me, but anyway, he got a little started a little earlier than I. No, he's not. He, not that he's much just older. no, he's not. He's <laughs> th I don't know four, three or four years older. But anyway, he. Uh, so that was cool, and then to see that car do what it did, and uh, and me to be able to say, hey, wow, I I was able to work on that thing. It was cool, and then and then uh, all of a sudden, some of Bobby Alloway's cars were in there, and I was getting to help work on those over the summer. And then we were always, in the meantime, Dad was always, and Mom and myself and my sister at that time, we were all going to, Dad was hauling us all off to Indy and the car show, the good guys' car shows. So then all of a sudden we'd see all these cars there. And Was this and, about 95, 96? Yeah. 97? That would have been there. Well, no, no, no. It would have been, I think Alan's car was in the early 90s. No, yeah, you're right. No, that would have been that time because I graduated in 93, I believe. So... I went down and worked a little bit, a few times, and with Paul full time with that, and that was that was kind of hard because I was away from home, and you know 
know, and it was just tough being away from home when you're young like that, I guess, for some kids anyway, it was for me. But um, anyway, I went back, opened a, I opened a blasting business for a while. Sandblasting? So, yeah, and then I helped, and then I'd do some interior work too because I'd learned it from Paul, and so I was doing some, uh, being able to work on some nicer cars down there just from being around Paul, and then, <clears throat> then that was when the question was posed by Dad you know, hey, do we want to grow this or do we want to get out of it? And I said, well, I want to work on cars. I'm, I'm ready to do that. So he, he had a chance to sell the route, so he sold the route. And uh, sold they sold the house up there, and I think I was in my 21 or 22 years old, and we headed south and <laughs> uh, and bought some land actually close to Paul there. Is, and uh, we built the shop that we're currently in for a little bit longer. And uh, mom and dad a house on that property, and uh, but since then we've sold it uh, here a year ago or so, and and uh, been building a new one. But that that's what led us down there. So yeah. And as from what I remember, the the very first thing that I can remember from greening is a yellow speedster, mm -hmm. and that I mean it had to be early. It couldn't have been too far. After that, no, because no, that must have was, been late '90s, early 2000s. Yeah, that what, was, what year did y'all move? So that would have been in '97 or '98. We moved to Alabama, and we yeah. built the shop. My grandfather come down. My grandfather and grandmother, dad's uh, folks, they come down. And uh, grandpa was a carpenter at one time in his life. So we built the building all down there. And and my uncle. I got an Uncle Alan, which is my mom's brother-in-law, and uh, he lived there, and so he was always over there, and he's <laughs> he's still with me on the new building, uh, helping out on that one. But uh, uh, my grandfather was there, hammering away, working his ass off, and he was actually, I think, the roughly the age that my dad is now, and uh, and it's funny because they're still just he dad's working his ass off like grandpa yeah. worked his ass off. You know, yeah, then. he's still hustling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty cool, and. Yeah, so we built the shop and and uh, uh, with help from the family and everything else. And then uh, Paul decided, you know, was doing some work for Bobby. And then Bobby was coming up with these speed stars. And then the coupe was, uh, he decided to do a coupe. And, oh, man, that was that thing is, is I personally think, still it's a really badass car and, and um, yeah, pretty cool the looks. And, looking oh, it is. Yeah, it's cool. It's so Paul struck up a deal with Bobby. Hey, can we have one of the first bodies out of the mold? And I think, I don't know, that one was like number two or something like that from Bobby. And uh, <clears throat> so we got it, and, and we built that car jointly with Paul in our shop. And uh, and then we were getting it close to the end, and it was looking good. Everything was detailed nice and was doing all right. And uh, <clears throat> I got a funny story about that one later. Uh, but anyway, the so it's, we're getting it put on and it's it's you know it's october i think we're putting this thing do it together the final assembly and everything else and paul's like hey we ought to carry this thing to detroit and dad and i had been to detroit because we lived close to it we'd always go down in the winter time something to do in the winter and and go check it out and the show and and uh, so we decided to load it up and and take it up there and i'll be damned if that one didn't win win the Riddler Awards that year. I, I was going to ask. I thought that one yeah. something. I don't, I don't remember if it was like best in the show at the best Coleman, Alabama yeah. local <laughs> cruise night. Or, I remember it winning something. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, yeah. Since yeah this was just is our a first uh, <laughs> video one. We had like one of those little counters Riddler Award. Bing, yeah. Bing. <laughs> number one. That, yeah, that was a neat car. I remember. I don't remember. Yeah. If it was, like, was it Super Rod? It was on the cover of or what? Yeah. <laughs> and I remember that it had the like motorcycle, motorcycle tires, tires yeah. Metzlers on the front. Yeah. And I thought, I was like, damn. Who, I mean, yeah. it worked so perfect, and how did nobody ever think about that before? I mean, it, it made, I, like, it just, it brought that car to a to a modern age that yeah. any other tire wouldn't have done. It, yeah. Well, it probably didn't steer worth the shit. <laughs> <laughs> sure wasn't we, were, we were scared as hell when we first <laughs> drove that thing. And I told Paul, I was like, because like, it, actually it was Paul's idea, and then there was uh, at uh, American Racing uh, Steve Zeber. Did you guys ever run or run no. into him at all over the years? He was a great dude. I, he's still around. I don't know what he's doing for sure now. I've kind of lost touch with him. Paul would know. I'm sure he's still in touch with him. But um, Paul had a good relationship with him, so he was able to get just the raw center with no hoops in it. And then they were finding a motorcycle hoop to 
and something had to be, or the center had to be machine special, and um, to get that, you know, their bead seats are different yep. diameters, and there's just little little differences between a car tire. But uh, anyway, we we go down, and Paul and I search out a bunch of damn tires and get them, finally find the right size we, we like on it. And, and uh, yeah, because then it was just the 17-inch wheels. Those are 17s and 19, or 17s and 20s, you know, and the, really there was nothing out there. This was the, this was where the transition of the larger diameter wheels were starting to come in. And, and so that 17-inch uh, motorcycle tire, we had to, uh, we, we searched all over for the damn thing. We finally found it, got it on there, and then showed it. And then Paul and I are going out to drive it for the first time. And and I was like, you know, bike tires leans, and <laughs> <laughs> you know they really don't have any shear on them like right. a car tire does. Yeah, well, and I know the bead low, seat's a little different. <laughs> yeah, 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 like yeah, twenty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but hell, it did fine, and the car yeah. drove good. And you know what little we drove them back then, but. Uh, yeah, it did. Drove good, rode good, and didn't do anything weird. But you know, we probably put like thirty-five miles on it <laughs> in its life. You know, well, that was back. That was back in the era when the OEs still really gave a shit about their concept cars. You know, and they yeah, were building yeah, yeah. some really crazy concept cars. And that that thing just was so concept car like. You know, for a street rod. I mean, I remember I, I went to your shop. I think it was in probably two thousand. I mean, mutual well, friend yeah. Brian Adams. Oh you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yep. Took me up there, and then I'm seeing, you know, Paul's shop's there, your shop's there. We're looking at this stuff, and, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm nobody, you know? Yeah. And I'm thinking, this is the, the – fuck the West Coast. <laughs> right, you know, right. <laughs> this is this is the craziest shit that's out there, you know, coming right off of, you know, the Riddler win and stuff. And, I mean, that car, seriously, we it's – it was it was something special. Yep. It, had, it just had that look. <laughs> yep. I, I met Eric Geiser over that, too, and uh, he was photographing it after the award, and – and to this day, I still have, you know, this was way before digital print or anything. And he was photographing that thing in downtown Detroit. It was cold and it was sunny out, but it was so cold. I mean, I think it was in the teens or something. We had that thing out there and he was photographing it. And, and some alleyway, you know, he, you know, photographers are, they'll get you in somewhere where you're like, you know, it's pretty damn word. sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> shout out to all the guys there. Now. <laughs> but uh, um, the uh, we're sitting there taking pictures of it, and he's snapping this huge ass camera with all these different things and, and or the different film plates or something. I don't know what they use, but um, uh, in this uh, police or this uh, Michigan State police car come up, come pulling up, and we're like, oh shit, here we go. And uh, he 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 goes, man, that thing's pretty badass. I bet it'll burn the tires, won't it? And we're like, yeah, probably. And and then he just, it was almost like super troopers. He just <laughs> killed a tire on that, <laughs> on, that on that car down the alley. <laughs> uh, and, tire. Yeah, and we were like, like that was kind of that, we were like, there, it was probably shooting stones all over Paul's car. But we were like, that was kind of cool. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, so that was a fun story on it. But, we, had, um, we had one of those yeah. situations. Remember that? I but remember the, well. I was thinking about it right when he was talking about yeah. it. it was on you the can, road tour. You can no, oh, yeah, you it, can tell that story. Well, it involves Paul oh, Atkins too. It does. Yeah, uh, it, it so involves we, a what? <laughs> what? So we dropped we dropped a car off at Paul's, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. And what? I think we might be trip. confusing trips. All right, they're two All right, different ones. I got another ones. one. But, but. Well, they're two different ones. This this is the one we picked up. Yeah. The car at Carlson's down in uh, Stewart, Florida. And a truck, yeah. A truck. So and our idea was we're going to just bomb this thing back home. Oh, nice. You know, to Chicago. Like, we're going to stop in Nashville. We're going to stop in Nashville for good guys. Yeah, stop in Nashville okay. for, for good guys. So we're just, like, ripping this thing, and we had to get there, like, quick. So, you know, we're, we're, like, we're getting a little loopy and stuff, and you're driving all night long. And we pull into this somewhere in Georgia. This was after we got pulled over on the highway. Got a and ticket. Got a ticket. We pull over to this gas station. In the Macon. Mid- Macon, Georgia. Macon, Georgia. In the middle of, like, it was oh, like, yeah. off in the middle of nowhere. Oh, yeah. It was, like, yep. seemed desolate, at least to me. Any uh, trees? Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're sitting there, and we had, yeah, peach trees. We, had a, we had an issue with the hood catch. So we're up there fucking around like zip zip time <laughs> right. you know, because we're like eh, if something like we'll fix this when we get back but we just want to make sure we're all good and these two cops roll up and i don't think we had like 
tags or stickers or there wasn't a lot of no the, the legal. Were you portion. wearing truck stop bandanas? That was too? the first time. So that no, was when we got pulled so, over. Yeah. Well, <laughs> obviously we were. Obviously, it did have tags on it because we got pulled over, and yes, yeah. we were wearing truck stop do rags. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and the two of us are sitting there like complete morons and we get a ticket. But here, these two cops pull up and these guys, they start talking to us. And these dudes were like, I mean, head over heels for the car. It was they're, super true. They're in the car. They're giggling. They're laughing. And they're talking to us about like hop, hop in the cruiser. And hey, we'll the, trade. The, the, take the two of us are looking at each other. And we're like. Yeah, so ideas are going back and it. forth. <laughs> we're like, dude. I, so Josh is like, he's like, dude. I, I guarantee you, he'll let me shoot his gun. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, dude, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> he was like, you know, you look. I'll let, I'll toss you all the keys to the cruiser, but let us, let us take the truck around. Like, let's just trade for like twenty minutes and all that. So I'm looking at Jeremy. I'm like, we should do this. Like, this is this is the time. And and yeah, the, for probably. I mean, this was in Macon, so you know they were great guys. Yeah. Probably for the next four hours, that's all we talked about I on know. that ride. I mean, it's the middle of the night, you know. So you get like you get punch drunk, you know, and you're loopy. Yeah, yeah. And we're just talking about all the scenarios of what we probably could have <laughs> talked those guys into. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Oh uh, my God! That's yeah. That's that. That'd be some good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Great shit. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, a little off track, but yeah. you know that's what it is. It's a conversation. That's right. Yeah. The uh, so the you know Paul's car wins the Riddler coming back. Now it's you know it's it's a business. You gotta, yeah. You got to yeah. like make yeah. a living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was it was like shit. Now what do we do? <laughs> so now it wasn't bad. I mean, we had some stuff lined up as we were going through that and. Uh, a uh, good customer. In fact, I chatted with him the other day after years of not hearing from him, but Ken Zappa, we did a little, um, uh, it was a four-door Willys, a 39 Willys sedan that we changed. I cut it all up and changed it into a two-door sedan. So, and then made a hood on it and cause he had a 671 blower on a small block in it, but we kept it under the hood. And so I had to make all, uh, you know, trying to change up the typical willies look you sure. know back then so we had 17 inch wheels on it and um it had been been nice if you guys had been around then because i had i think part of the original chassis with a fat man's front end on it <laughs> and then i don't remember what we used on the rear end of it but i mean it was just that you know of that era where you're piecing stuff together to sure. to make them go down there's a few pieces a few companies out there to give you some parts and pieces but yeah so it's <clears throat> Really, I'm kind of glad it's. Uh, I'm as old as I am because <laughs> I, I got to learn all that stuff, and I can really appreciate the stuff that we get today where, where and have access from. today. Yeah, yep. There was there was a lot of there was heavy hitters coming out, and it was they were back to back to back. We talked about this in episodes before. It's it's yeah. You've come. You up. don't want to be a one hit wonder. You've right. got to you got to come. Jesse's name's come up quite a bit. You yeah. Know, we, we, with Alan Johnson, we're talking about with Paul Atkins. That was pretty cool to talk about that because alan contributed a lot of his success and opportunities to yeah. paul yeah. even we back in our early years paul was kind of a mentor and it's it's cool to hear yeah. two three four different guys that all you yeah, know that's right shaped the industry a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. Paul, paul drove yeah. a lot of that very cool guy he, yeah he definitely did but so, there was but, there was cutting edge stuff coming i mean that the charcoal and silver what was at 35 chevrolet yeah, yeah, that's Don Montgomery's car. Don's so, car, yeah. and yep. then the uh, the bubble top, that copper bubble top, and I mean that thing oh, was that, like that's, that's right. Badass. I forgot about that. Yeah. That, that was uh, Wyatt Fuller's car. He was a pretty, he was a strange dude, but a good dude, and he he did some neat stuff. He did a he had a business that was Skunk Works for Harley Davidson. Really? Yeah. So he designed and it had Harley headlights, didn't it? It did, and I damn dropped. No, I didn't. One of my guys then we were trying to do something with that, and we. No, it wasn't that car. It was his Speed Star. I did mm. a Speed Star for him, a coupe, silver one, and it had a funky tan interior in it then. And then we, that was, that could have been, I, I doubt it, but it could have been one of the first cars with, it was a silver car. And then I did charcoal satin centers on the Budnick wheels then. Yep. And uh, and so that was kind of set it apart at, at the time. It was something a little different than everybody had been doing. But, um, <clears throat> but, yeah, Wyatt gave us those headlights, and they were off of a V-Rod, I think, and they were prototyping those bikes. He had a prototype there, and somehow he got a hold of two prototype headlights, 
And I'll be damned if one of my new guys didn't drop oh, one of those things. Awesome. We, and I had to go ask him for another one. <laughs> he got hold of three prototype headlights. <laughs> That's <then>. right, he <laughs> did. <laughs> I forgot uh, about all that stuff. That's you know those fun two things that you're not supposed to have? I need one more. <laughs> right, <those>. right. <laughs> Is there any way? <laughs> it's interesting to me because I can remember, there's so many like hit cars from that era, those like early 2000s. But honestly, and I'm not just saying that because you're here right now, but... <laughs> Your car is always, like, I can vividly remember all of them. I can remember where I was seeing the car. It was always, like, typically good guys, Columbus or India. I can vividly remember That's cool. staring at these cars. And back then, you know, and I've, I've made a comment about this because I still think of you as a young dude, but you're really not. Because <laughs> kind of back, old. Well, back then, like, I was, a, I, I mean, I was, like, 19, 20 years old, yeah. and you were, you were a young dude back then. But yeah. I just remember, like, you know, I looked at you as like being this like like icon you know i'm like looking at this dude i'm like holy fuck man that's like and i remember walking through columbus and you had your red 32 oh yeah there yeah, the roads there and i'm there with my wife and i'm walking through and i was like just that, i can remember walking around the car and you're there cleaning the car and that's, it's that's, such a vivid memory of like that's a good memory because that's a very rare memory that was probably one of our dirtiest builds ever because yeah. it was my own car yeah. <laughs> well, from the outside look, yeah. i didn't know all like yeah. the nitty-gritty yeah. about it but yeah. the profile of that car yeah. the lines of that car like the headlights stance, taillights yeah, that, all that stuff yeah. that Thank car you. had it going on i mean we it, bought that shield. wedge shape Go ahead. <laughs> I thought you bought a shitload of headlights and taillights after seeing that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys did, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, we were buying a lot of headlights. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's uh, a great marketing piece. <laughs> that was. Yeah. yeah and and uh, that's good to hear because that's trying or what I'm trying to do here uh, soon with, with uh, new stuff. Yeah, it seems but to be yeah. the way to prove it. Like when you put it on vehicles like that, a, a car that really stands out. I and mean, that did it for us. We saw yeah. it. And it was for us, it's like, oh, dude, if like Jesse's putting it on his cars, and he's making it like it's badass. We've <laughs> got to be, we got to be using this. And it, honestly, I mean, that like your was it thirty four commercial, thirty two commercial headline? Uh, yeah, thirty four. It, yeah. It's thirty four commercial. And I'm then, losing uh, my hot rod. Now, yeah, I know. Now, yeah, it's it's so, yeah. so damn long. But yeah. that was like it's such a simple concept. But it, that headlight was so badass. It was slimmer. It didn't have that stupid little spring loaded tab mm -hmm. on on the bottom. Yeah, just and, some small details yeah. to it that m made it look. Quite a bit different than what you could just get aftermarket, yeah. you know, a reproduction yeah. aftermarket piece. And we use those constantly. I mean, I you talk about like messing up prototype stuff. So I can remember two or three different times welding on your tail lights, your little bullet tail lights, because yeah. I wanted to put them on like some stanchion <laughs> and just killing the threads <laughs> on it. You know, oh, you're like, oh, damn, damn it. <laughs> like melt a few lenses. Yeah. yeah. And that's when you're like, God damn, why doesn't he just put the fucking little spring know, thing right? on it like the normal <laughs> ones are, you know? Like, what the fuck's yeah. he thinking? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I will say, I mean, we've all talked about those cars that, you know, imprinted on us. And you, it's interesting, Jeremy said, that you remember those cars, but you, you remember those cars, but you also remember the details. That's, I'm just thinking that now, as you're saying that, it's never really dawned on me before. You remember a lot of cars and that that that, that imprint on you, or yeah. you know, for lack of a better term, but you remember so many details about Jesse's cars, you know, and the things are done in in and of it, the car itself. I mean, that '62 and bubble top and Palo. I mean, God grief, how long ago is that thing built? But I remember yeah, the. That was wild. I can close my eyes right now and 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 see the and that was you know the brushed finishes and the mat and that was like. Yeah, that was a game changer. You didn't Holy see that shit. on anything. And yeah. I remember we were somewhere <clears throat> down south and like it was on an overpass. All of a sudden we saw this orange thing coming and we're like, oh shit, that that's badass. And then <laughs> like, oh fuck, that's Jesse's bubble top. Like out in the middle of nowhere, not for a car yeah. show. Yeah. And you see this cool. thing ripping by. And that's awesome. Dude, I know, just the bumpers and like <clears throat> it was like, kind of the first Sick. thing that had like the the diffusers and a little bit of that like yeah. modern supercar inspired stuff on. Yeah anything in our our industry and was, somehow you got it in street rotter which yeah, i don't know yeah, how that I worked that was cover street rotter i think I mean, street rotter was tough back it was then, it was real that, tough that i think it you know is back to that you know me uh gaining a relationship with eric yeah. uh geisert and, and him you know shooting a lot of them for us so because he shot that willies that i was talking about and you know paul's car first and then the willies after that and then he's just kind of I would always send him pictures. He'd ask me to send him pictures, so I would. And then, then I got to know Brian a little bit. Brian Brennan uh, was the editor at the time, and and uh, I think he was the editor at the time. And uh, I know he was later on, but um, 
I can't remember the progression there, but uh, yeah, that's that always helped to you know. And, I mean, it was a genuine relationship with those guys, so they were they were good. Um, but yeah, that was. I'm sure that ruffled some feathers. I mean, because at that era, that was still like pre forty seven. You know, oh, yeah. street rod yeah. only. You know, yeah. and they would yeah. trickle in a couple of tri fives every now and then. But I mean, you've got this hyper modern, you know, sixties, and that was. You know, it's pro touring, right. you know, yeah, back then. air yeah, quotes it was, as it gets, right, you know? right. So I'm sure they probably lost a couple memberships over yeah. that. I remember yeah. even there back was some strong hate mail, yeah, back then <laughs> actual, actual, letters. actual mail, written letters, <laughs> actual yeah. mail. We were doing like a ton of marketing with them, and we would get just hard nose on a car that just yeah. didn't yeah. fit the criteria, yeah, which was probably the nice way of saying that <laughs> car just kind of sucked. It's not that thing, <laughs> really, right, but, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I, I'm, I'm sure that wasn't the case, but yeah, it's just, it was weird. It was a it was a finicky time, and and uh, you know, digital completely turned that world upside down. So yeah, and it's a different landscape now. But my my point to all that about how how detailed the cars were in in above that, we've talked about this before on several podcasts about there's a right way and there's a wrong way to do it, and there's guys that just get it, and you've you've always let the car speak for themselves right you've because you we're really good friends we've hung out we've done trips yeah, yeah. we've done all kinds of stuff right yeah. we've done things and we can't even talk about that's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> but but even prior to that you know you have to become friends somehow right and that's you don't right. you don't become friends by being a dickhead right. or like worrying about you know well you know you built this car and yeah. I didn't get this and I didn't get that and and you've never done that you were you were your dad either Jeff hasn't done that either yeah. it's it's always yep. been like you know <clears throat> we're having a good time yeah this is what yep. we brought if you like it great that's if you right. don't I really don't give a fuck. That's Here's right. a beer anyway. <laughs> That's right. You know? Well, Jesse's dad's just <laughs> universally known as dad. I was going to say, I forgot his <laughs> name. Yeah, yeah, I forget his name. I've, I've known the guy for like 20 years. His <laughs> dad. Where's his dad? Yeah, yeah. 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 His dad. dad. Jesse's dad. <laughs> uh, for the record, his name is Jeff. Jeff. Or yeah. Jeffrey. <laughs> How are those new shoes working out for him? <laughs> <laughs> he does have the dad he's, jokes. He's, uh, I think he had to retread them. Uh, you know, not yeah. long ago, he's worn them out so much. Yeah. But yeah, you go from it's funny how the things have changed. You go from remembering like every single detail of every car that Jesse's done. The jokes. To, to, no, to now all you remember is like what dad's got in the cooler. He yeah, might yeah, right. he might have some crazy like. Forty thousand dollar custom machine one off wheels, but you walk right past <laughs> those. <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. For one reason, you, you, they're yeah, dirty. Yeah, you got something <laughs> in the cooler, man. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm thirsty. A beer. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's been a cool uh, evolution of the relationship. Yeah, yeah. and we probably take that for granted, to be honest with you. I mean, what other industry? Yeah, you could you have there. the friendships yeah. with? In, I mean, if you break it all down, a competing, a competitor, yeah, a competing yeah, company. Yeah, you're right. But we've never looked at each other's competitors, and yeah. we, yeah. and I mean, dude, just he's got like multiple Riddler. We've only touched awards. on one, so, <laughs> so of course yeah, we haven't we're not. Got, like, we it's, haven't it's, got. it's a different league. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, when when you beat us for Street Machine of the Year, we weren't even like that mad. <laughs> But at least you could tell him. Like, that's what I like about that. Uh, yeah. I like losing to that because I could straight up tell him, like, dude, fuck you. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> like, fuck. Well, do you remember? Do you, ooh, my car went 200 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember the first time it actually got dropped? Where it was, well, first it was funny as shit, but yeah. that was at, it was at Columbus. Like, well, yeah, you know, well, we were, we were trying to get, they were trying to kick us out. It was late, you know, and just one street machine of the year, you know, and or yeah. even talking about cups from the previous year, I think it was. I think handing. I think you're handing out cups. Um, somebody was handing out cups, and it was for a street machine year winner for the previous year. You yeah. know, and it was like, oh, here, drink out of this, drink out of this cup, and then, and then it kind of got brought up. Well, yeah. why don't you drink out this big ass golden cup? Oh, that's that's right. You don't have a Riddler. <laughs> Not only so for, do you not have uh, one. Every, for yeah. everybody listening, you know, Jesse's a very humble guy. We, this is this is an inside joke. No, we just ball it, it is. We just yeah, it's, it's good. Balls. It's, we have a lot of we, fun with it. I still can't wait to after the podcast since I'm here in the building. I still get the tour of that toolbox stack that you all have from all those awards. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'd like to know where the hell you've put them all. <laughs> They're scattered. Barry took most of them. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, good stuff, yeah. but yeah, no. It's, I'm it's, surprised it's, you didn't bring a Riddler just kind of walking in with it. Damn it! Oh, you can pour Damn. my whiskey in this. Yeah. Oh mind. my god, I'll show it. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> little punch bowl. Yeah, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Yeah, I'm slipping so, a little. Then in all seriousness, out of all those cars, what do you think's the one that stands out the most to you as your most proud accomplishment for for the shop, for yourself? What's what's the one? Gosh, I don't know. I mean, that's a... Uh, or is it yet to come? <laughs> it, it could be yet to come. I mean, that's that's a fair statement, too. But the uh, I don't know. I've, I've always had fun. I always try keeping one in uh, one in there for ourselves or something around and like dad's truck it's got family history it's been around with us forever um it's been through a few iterations over the years but we always kind of keep it true to what it was and and keep it at a point where it's just always fun and can be used and and um uh so that's probably for what it is probably the one but yeah. you know and then there's my little white roadster i had a while back and that was just a I was trying to do a traditional stuff on it, but yet yeah, keep it, it more modern. Up, it didn't so. end up traditional. No, it yeah, wasn't it traditional was cool at all. As, that was it, cool as hell. It, it, I mean, it kind of had a, I don't know, maybe a, I could be wrong, but it was probably had a, I, mean, I was trying to get at that traditional look to it, but have a modern, a really modern edge to it, I guess. Well, the wheels. Make it work, yeah. right? Is that right? I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just thinking, I, every time I hear or see that white roadster, I just <laughs> think about one, that one story of on the road tour. And we were going oh my west, God. the west side of Amarillo, and this was a I wasn't there story. for this one. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we we were on the road tour. Um, this is one of the, I think this is the very first Good Guys Road Tour, wasn't it? Uh, first or second? Yeah, I think so. I think we were, so. I think we start in Colorado, or we we're coming. Yeah, we're yeah coming from Colorado, Colorado to Texas. Yeah, and so it went we, around went to we're, Texas. We're coming down. Everybody, I mean, that's listening, that's ever been to SEMA, that's ever taken forty. I mean, you've been there. You know what's west of Amarillo, and it's that big cattle farm, right? It's that. It smells delightful for oh my god, well, an hour. It's, Even it's, with the it windows smell, up, it, it smells great in a dually pulling yeah. a trailer with yeah. the windows up. Yeah, you know, it's horrible. You've never <laughs> smelt it in a roadster with the top off. <laughs> 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 And we're, <laughs> we're, oh my god <laughs> and it's me and jesse rolling he's driving we're laid out and first of all that thing is comfortable as shit and i didn't believe him and uh you know we're on the road tour and so we stop at one of the legs whatever and jesse's like come on ride with me so we hop in and we've been going for two three hours something like that and you you sit in that thing so damn comfortable and then then it this is it just rode really really good and we're, you're just laid back and I mean, it's loud as shit. It's basically like I'm in the sidecar of a motorcycle, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Everybody, you know, has had, yeah. had roadsters. So, I mean, we're sitting there just, I mean, just enjoying. It's a beautiful fucking day, right? Well, we're getting close, and you kind of every now and then kind of get a little bit of a whiff. <laughs> and we both have ran that route so many times, so you know. And we're looking at each other, and it's like, <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> oh, shit. So it, it continues to start getting worse and worse and worse you know so you're you're laughing because it's so bad but we we thought we thought we were like in the thick of it but we had no idea that it was fixing to get so i don't even know how he was driving i was laughing at you this is tears tears running down our faces like trying and there's nothing you could do about it it was on you you just had to get through it it was on you had to carve through it (laughs) there at one point At one point, he's over there, just like both hands on his tongue, rubbing it, going, "It's it's it's in my mouth." <laughs> oh my god, I, <laughs> I couldn't hardly drive. They were laughing behind us because the car was going all the road. Because I was crying, laughing so hard, and and uh, <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was just a that the, was a trip. The very, I mean, it was just probably twenty minutes, you know, west of that. I'm sorry, east of that. That that we stopped, got to get some gas, and you know beef jerky drinks whatever and that was where i told everybody i ain't never eaten an ass but (laughs) if i had to guess if i had to guess that's exactly (laughs) what it would be like (laughs) oh shit Uh, that's a good story Oh man! And my, yeah. only, my road tour story that involves the two of you guys was this was years back. You're driving that Chevelle, and I don't even know if we should bring this up because maybe Jesse didn't even know about it because I don't know if he was driving. But it, that was it the F85 
Oh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this, oh, yeah, yeah. No, is, I wasn't driving. This is controversy. Yeah, this, yeah, it's, this is a little controversial. So we're no, driving fine. a Camaro out here, and we're down some, like, gravel road. And this asshole. No. <laughs> yeah. No, there's. <clears throat> yeah. This is the one I was going to bring up earlier <laughs> Dude, when we talk about the police. What do you mean, no? <laughs> you, First of all, I was getting passed on the outside. No, you pull out, like, your damn John Force. <laughs> All right, and just stand on this thing after coming off of a gravel driveway. And it sounded like you just fired a shotgun at the front of this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Little Jesse's thing. aware of it. Yeah, yeah, it's he painted the whole front of the car. <laughs> that was that F85. It got, it got to the hotel, and that thing was just peppered. And those guys, there was stones inside the car. <laughs> There's gravel inside the car. You're I'm remembering console. it incorrectly. <laughs> so enlighten us then. No, tell us. We're, we were, I think you were because yeah. you were. You we guys were, were all, racing. We were I would. All, I would like to point out this is 2022. Yeah, I'm going to tell you 2022 <laughs> okay. truth version. Like we are all rolling on the same shitty it's not full gravel but it's not full well paved. it was, was seal coat yeah on and it was loose so yeah. we're all right and there's a there's a distance in between us we're all put the same distance in between us the f85 decided he's gonna roll past me right and you on the left let, side you're not letting that happen well if 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 he's saying it's time to go well, then it's time to go and i'm like well you're not gonna you're not gonna I'm not just going to let you just roll by. So I stayed in it, right? So I stay in it the same probably car length ahead of him. Well, yeah, I mean, it's going to pepper the shit out of the front end. But, like, I, I mean, these are like two 700-horsepower cars <laughs> with probably 315s or something on the back, sticky tires, and it's hot out, uh, sticky gravel. I mean, what do you, you just roll out of it and just, like, give them the, hey, go ahead, <laughs> no, go on right. by. Uh, I stand corrected. Go on by. <laughs> I stand corrected. You could have peppered the front right. of your car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I only did. had, like, 430 horse. We had that, like... <laughs> LS3, and I just stood back. We watched from afar. That's right. Yeah. You, you were smart in that. Yeah. And, and uh, we get back, and I 3D printed, had, you know, 3D printed all the Oldsmobile on the front and the trim on the grill and everything out, and it's all jacked up, got teeth missing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, well, what happened to this? The whole hood's rashed up. I did, I did apologize. I felt bad. I had, but at the same time, like, yeah. it, I, I didn't do it on purpose. He he no, no. he opened the door and yep. said, "Let's roll." Yeah, because yeah. I don't think he he kept that thing under one twenty five the no, whole tour. No, 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 that was a good car for that. Mm -hmm. That was a good car to keep running that while. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was a good one though. Road <laughs> road tours have, have have got some stories. That's for sure. Yeah, you know, we've had a, a good, good time. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get that hanging around polishing on them. <laughs> no, you, no, you don't. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, this one time this guy came by and helped me polish my wheels. It was awesome. <laughs> that would make a huh. great podcast. <laughs> great story, dude. <laughs> that is an awesome story. <laughs> Imagine the stories we'd tell well, we got if one... we weren't recording. <laughs> <laughs> we got one great polishing story. SEMA. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> are we do we are we allowed to like yeah, talk about probably. things like that? Yeah. Tell that. All right. I don't know what that is. That was a know. GoPro dying. That's Are we talking about the? Je I don't think Jesse's ever heard this story. We're talking about the mother's one. Yeah, yeah. I think I have charger. heard this story. <laughs> you heard about this? I think I I, I may have. And so we bring this charger that you did the wheels for it, and you know, this car this was like a this was a heavy hitter build for us. Like we brought this out and we thought like this is the one we're gonna be winning. We're gonna be winning something. We were gunning for like the mother's shine right. award with it. We thought it was that level of car. Well, you know my dad decides for whatever reason beforehand he goes on he's screwing around on the internet and he like googles this like the ultimate wax you know he just he like finds this like it's like triple diamond it was like black like diamond black wax diamond. it came like a it wooden jewelry a, box yeah it's like three hundred dollars he's like this is what we need this is gonna make these fucking cars shine right so he buys this stuff and he's like this is what we're using on these cars so we're out there at SEMA and he tells this guy who works for us this is what you're what you're putting on the car. Well, we know we use predominantly, like when you're detailing a car, realistically, like not send an endorsement or anything, but we're, for the most part, we're using Mother's like yeah. quick detailer and most of their stuff. Well, Dan, we probably should take that out because I probably shouldn't say his name, right? Remove the name. Remove the name. Yeah, we'll so, call him Latrell Daniels. So, <laughs> <laughs> said individual <clears throat> starts, he's waxing this car and he's polishing up. It's parked at SEMA. It's like front and center in the main hall. And he's got his Roadster Shop detail bag, his Roadster Shop shirt on. And you know when the 
for the Mother Shine stuff, they cruise around like yeah. the night before. That's right. And they kind of judge everything discreetly. So yeah, here, all wearing mothers. Yes. Shirts yeah, right. and mother's clipboards and yeah, mother's it's very yeah. so it's, so it's, they're walking around <laughs> yeah. doing their thing. Discreetly to the outside, you know, but internally, yeah, you know exactly yeah, yeah. what yeah, they're yeah. doing. So this guy, they show up and he starts talking to them and they say, Oh, what are you using on the car? I am using this triple black diamond extra gloss <laughs> carnuba wax <laughs> we exclusively <laughs> use this at the roadster and, shop and they're like oh so like you're not was that is that all you use? oh absolutely uh my <laughs> my owner said the owner just said absolutely do not under no circumstance do you use anything other than this particular <laughs> wax <laughs> i'm missing anything there but that yeah, was yeah it was yeah that's pretty much it yeah Needless to say, we have not won a Mother's Shine Award <laughs> since, <laughs> or prior to. Uh, oh, oh, man. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe they'll uh, start giving yeah, out He award. proudly told us that story, <laughs> that a group of guys came up, and I told them, this is what this we use. We're using. <laughs> Those were the Mother's Shine judges. <laughs> well. Uh, <laughs> Anywho. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Former employee. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've yeah. stuff. So where um, where are you at now? So you you're you're building a new shop. So what's the what's the plans? Yeah, that's uh, a big shop. I've seen yeah, some stuff on awesome Instagram. Looking shop. Yeah, thank you. Um, just giving us some more room, basically, and then I can expand on the machining department side of it, and uh, and just get better organized again. Yeah. <laughs> so because the space will help us do that, and. Um, yeah, and it's just, I don't know, it'll help ener- re-energize everything, too. Probably I'm being selfish on that. So, But, um, yeah, I, I'm super excited about it. I've been overseeing the construction of it, so that's been um, fun as well because something a little different. But yeah, it's still kind of in the same same realm of making sure a project gets put together, a project car gets put together, but it's, it's just, you know, something different. So. Machining two by fours and <clears throat> no, not going that far. <laughs> <laughs> I did machine. I did have the guys machine my corner stone instead of just scratching my name in the concrete. Yeah. <laughs> we got this cool little billet piece. I'm gonna put in, there? in the good. in the concrete or in the concrete, so it'll be. This we nice did that piece. out here. It was like 2017. We put this building up, and yeah, you know, we brought our little kids over, and uh, my daughter's like, she's pretty firm. Yeah. So my son comes over and he like gently. Puts yeah, his yeah, hands in there. Yeah. My daughter comes over and she's like, "Bam!" <laughs> <laughs> so now, like, it's still there. Like, yeah, carts get awesome stuck though. on it. Like, cars get like kind of yeah. yeah. fingerprints. Yeah, they high yeah. yeah. on yeah. it. Thanks, honey. We just she spilled do over that. something. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do That's that. a good idea, actually. I might get yeah, them the over kids, there for that too. Hands. So yeah, get the kids over there for it. So that's like seventeen thousand square feet. Or so. uh, actually, so, yeah. 16. sixteen. So I'm doing an eighty by two hundred, and then I've got. Right now we're we're in about our working area is about six thousand square feet, so it's that's gonna yeah, be awesome. It's, yeah, it's gonna be so much better. Uh, we sold the old shop about a year ago, year in a few months ago, and I'm having to lease back until we get built. So and and um, in the southeast we've had just basically a monsoon season the whole year, so it's probably about seven months behind you guys know about all that with the yep. construction crap yeah, yeah. but and uh so it's probably right on track but anyway it feels feels slow but uh yeah it's it's coming around and and uh it's it's gonna be good and and um it'll it'll help us get a more organized uh, you know just be able to provide kind of more service too for for some of the some of the local guys wanting some repair work as well so you look at getting to more of the product side and yeah, you got a good yeah. amount of stuff out there now. Engine, I, dress up, <clears throat> valve covers, a lot of cool. And and we will, I think, through the, you know, the, just the Greening Auto Company brand. But um, uh, you know, we're doing a lot of private labeling too. So whatever we need to, you know, and I, I'm I'm okay ramping up on that stuff too. Uh, I've I've never been good at the marketing side of things. I don't I don't feel it, that I that I am. But the uh, what kind of markets so, itself though. Yeah, that's if right. Yeah, if I'm private really labeling does. for some, yeah. uh, somebody else, they're doing the marketing. They're just getting an order, and I need to fulfill that order. And, and, uh, and you know, I, could, I just deal with that one person, too, as opposed to all of their customers. As a, you know, 
so that makes it a little easier too i think but yeah what uh <clears throat> build a new shop got a lot of plans obviously for the future doing some more products where do you see the industry heading over the next five ten years you've seen it you know not to call you old but right. you have, have <laughs> you've seen the last you know yeah 20 years um where do you think it's going um, gosh i don't know i think i think um you know as the as the old car say i'm putting in air quotes old car uh because that keeps you know bumping up along with us you know you'll start seeing um maybe different trends into some of the 80s and 90s cars and which will be pretty interesting i think uh, and then hopefully maybe if i'm unless i'm way off track you know, maybe some of this European stuff yep. is going to start getting noticed. You know, the Porsches really are. Uh, you know, but why not the BMWs? Why not some of the older Mercedes and and stuff like that? Because they're you know they're just killer cars. It's, it it just uh, hasn't had much attention given to them. And I think maybe a younger generation might you know because they're they're those are easier to get as a new car nowadays. Maybe they'll start um, seeing some of the noticing some of the older stuff and and um, maybe diving into some of that stuff. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's where it may move to. As you see the, uh, <clears throat> the resurgence of the, uh, or the popularity of the OBSs grow and a lot of that era stuff coming into the 90s and stuff, and like you said, the BMWs and you're going to get into the sports car stuff, where do you think that the uh, market's going to go on the Miatas, like for racing and stuff? <laughs> well, I mean, you got to like look at it this way. So, Jesse does... A lot of wheels. When you're dealing with like a 12 inch wheel, yeah. I mean, from a cost standpoint, you can make something pretty phenomenal for reasonable money. From so, from an economical standpoint, like you can literally machine a monoblock wheel. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, how, yeah. You're not light. I mean, it's what, a weight game. On are are they still 14s on those? Or are they? I didn't. I thought they that? were 12s. I didn't. Oh, are know, they still 12s? But, but maybe they're oh, maybe they're 14s. 14s. I'm I didn't know. Phil, I hate all of you. Phil, what size? <laughs> what size wheels are those Miata? They're round. <laughs> We, uh, we haven't worked it in in a while. Sorry. Yeah, I've got two episodes off. I really yeah. appreciate that. <laughs> it feels good. It really does. It was a long way home, but uh, <laughs> what? What do when you is see? The Hummer coming out. The Hummer. <laughs> we, uh, oh, we've got it. Yeah, that's that's probably one that yeah. we've got to touch on. Nobody at some would point. Tonight's it. not the night, but Tonight's we'll get we'll tonight. get there. Once the once we get the video footage rolling, then yeah, <laughs> then it'll it'll be pretty yeah. apparent at that point. They'll, they'll understand. <laughs> Looking at you, yellow H two Hummer. Every chrome accessory AutoZone sells, yeah, it's a fit. Yeah. That'll look good. <laughs> <laughs> nice diversion. <laughs> like that. Uh, Practicing to be a bullfighter. <laughs> so, you know, obviously <laughs> model years and stuff is, is definitely something we've, we're all seeing um, as, as a major change over the next few years. I mean, we're seeing it now on, on the custom chassis side of things for sure. Yeah. Um, what do you see mm-hmm. is... is one of the be- the biggest improvements or the or the major shift or changes that that you're doing now that you that you weren't doing then or even has the marketplace changed i mean what i know that from from us building cars and building cars previously you know 15 years ago yeah. it was completely different than yeah, now you're you're using them now yeah. well, you're yeah. using them but yeah, you can also them. like a project like Jesse's just starting right now there's options for a standalone trans controller for a DCT that's right BMW yeah, that's trans. Right. So there's there's some pretty cool stuff out there yeah. that lets you be and this is just my opinion you asked him I'm jumping in but it's, you can be pretty creative with some pretty awesome parts yeah no I agree with that and I think that's probably a, <clears throat> some of the trend that we'll start seeing coming up too is alternative stuff out, out of the LS LT platform coyote platform yeah. you know and maybe some of the more exotic stuff so and because it's gotten to where, you know, there's some of that trickle down stuff to us, you know, from the OEs or the tech or whatever, however, wherever you want to find it from. But anyway, they, that's getting more accessible to us so we can start dabbling into those things. I mean, I, I can see where you're, where you're coming from, but 2001, grab that LS6 and street and performance catalog. You could do whatever you wanted oh, to. Yeah. As long as you have a bridge port. And a huge and massive nut, nut and bolt pin. Nut and bolt pin. Yeah, <laughs> right. can, um, I mean, yeah. you, you remember those days? Yeah. What Jeez. I mean, and now, like you, t- like he's talking about, you're you're going to put that VM the new model BMW, 
yep. you know, with a DCT, you know, and there's there's options. There's yes, companies. Yeah. There's controllers. There's things. There's the, the aftermarket's so much more sophisticated and advanced now compared to what it was. You know that that's a prime example. This you know stream yeah. performance in the like in its prime, it served a purpose because there's what no else other were you going to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. But if you were going to assemble a front drive, a serp, well, it wasn't really a serpentine. It was more of a V belt setup. Mm-hmm. But that that would be like a week long project. Oh yeah, absolutely. because you better believe that you're machining parts, you're replating parts, you're making your own turnbuckles, you're finding hardware, you're making spacers. There's just so many good aftermarket parts now that make the job, I but think, a lot easier. I think that's so, because of Jesse's point is is you're using them and yeah, you have yeah. and that's you have to get better. <clears throat> you have yeah, we we've uh, well not us so much, but our customers. And the people coming to us is is the reason for that. You know, it's it's come it's had to go through us to um, show some of the failures after we started using them and everything else, and then everybody having to come up and and make better products for us and and be able to let us use them better. And this know. this is not taking anything away from shows. I mean, I don't want to like get on the thing of, of start beating down car shows. We've all got our start at car shows. I just I think all the customers and we all as shops would rather drive to the shows. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And yeah. then drive them back to the hotel. <clears throat> you know? I think there's still a good, uh, there'll always be a good place for a car show. I mean, you can't, yeah. you still get out, you get to have camaraderie there, you talk, you chat, you're doing what we're doing here at a car show. And, um, but to add to that is that trip to it or the trip home. I mean, it's some just, amazing times with that and it's it's a good thing i think so and i think see a lot more people um should be look into that or maybe focus on that i don't know so it's crazy is when think about the stress level now you're gonna hop in a car modern day now mm-hmm. customer's car <clears throat> personal car shop car shop build and drive four six eight ten twenty hours to a show yeah. right then, go back in time twelve years ago, ten years ago. <laughs> you were, you were I'm tra- it from your booth to the well, pros. And, but, right. but you were <laughs> you were trailer. And I hope it didn't overheat. You were, <laughs> oh, were going to yeah. trailer the car, right? You didn't have yeah. nothing to worry about. You trailered the car all the way there, and you going to oh, no wait wait wait. You the, had to worry about it. Well, because it might have hit the floor in the trailer, <laughs> or something <laughs> fell over on it in the trailer. Yeah. You or something you, would be able to break. Yep. In, on the car yeah, in the on trailer. the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to go. You know. A third of a mile yeah. from the trailer parking to make it over the thing, and you're a nervous wreck. Oh gosh, you yeah. know. And the yeah. whole time, then you're a nervous wreck. You know, you know, is it is it everything's clean, everything polished? Is it going to do this? Is going to do that? Worried to death, you know, about everything. Yeah. Um, and you hop in it and drive it now. You know. Yeah. It should uh, be a lot more stressful <clears throat> for what you're what oh, you're asking the car to do. But it's weird you don't don't because you know you're. You kind of got this mix of parts that you've used before in the last one, so it's you, it's probably going to be okay. So, perfect example of that was a uh, little original paint car '63 Galaxy I just put together uh, back in the fall. I finished it up. Uh, had one of your guys' uh, uh, what is a fast track chassis under it <clears throat> and bare brakes. Uh, one of Don Hardy's LS motors in it, and then we. Uh, doctored it all up to look like the original Ford motor in it. Uh, put the interior back mostly like the original. So but that left... was that was Jesse Greening that put an LS in a Galaxy, right? That's right. right. Yeah, Get yeah that you on can... record. Yeah. Oh, I I've destroyed Jeez, two who guys. Would, <laughs> who <laughs> would, would, would do just... something like that? <laughs> right? <laughs> Sacrilege. Yeah, I really hurt two guys' feelings out in uh, 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 Scottsdale at the show out there when we were out there because he was asking me what Ford it was, and I was like. Uh, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's not. No. Of, uh, uh, <clears throat> and they had they had the Ford hat on and the Ford shirt and jacket. Was it airbrush? Uh, airbrush? No, or? it was one of those shiny Ford okay. jackets. Uh, <laughs> it's one of the <laughs> nice. diehard guys. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, the uh, yeah. So we threw that thing together. I was able to get a couple hundred miles on it before we left. Just driving it back and forth to home and getting alignments on it and getting it ready to go on the trip and. <clears throat> Dad, aka Jeff, he, <laughs> uh, him and I hopped in it, <clears throat> and we left Alabama, 
uh, never hit a freeway all the way to Scottsdale, Arizona. And just I had 256 miles on it when we left the house that morning. And uh, we left out there, and, and um, shit, I had not one issue with that car the whole way. And, awesome. and, and we, shit, we had a good time. Yeah. <laughs> and then we went to Scottsdale, good guys, Arizona, um, and hung out there a little bit. And then we went up and spent a day with our friend Don Montgomery, which I've done a few cars for over the years. And, and, uh, Don. and then we, yeah, oh, Don. Don, Don, Don. <laughs> Cow farm again. again. <laughs> Cattle farm. And uh, then we uh, hauled ass, uh, made it back in two days uh, awesome. on 40. So. Went by that stinky ass cow farm again, <laughs> <laughs> cattle farm. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, it's it's good. You you just you just hop in them and go anymore. So yeah, you know, it's uh, it's it's definitely different. So and it's a good different. So I think. Say a guy walks into the shop Monday when you're back, mm-hmm. right? And says unlimited budget. Don't care how long or how much it costs, but I have no idea what I want to build. Just build something. He'd want to build a really cool two-lane paved driveway up to the new shop. Because <laughs> that's going to be really expensive, and it's going to take no budget. <laughs> uh, but Rotary no. screw compressor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, he'd want to build something like that, I'm sure of it. <laughs> uh, no, I man, I don't know. That's a tough question. Yeah, there's no right or wrong answer. Yeah, there, yeah. Sometimes yeah. you get that. I think I'm head. interested to know because you're very diverse in in what you're into. Yeah. Every I think time that's, I see that's you, why the uh, that's why the yeah, answer is hard. Every time I see you, it could be like a you know some wacky short wheelbase Oldsmobile or it's a Porsche or it's a little bobber. I think you've got a very cool like it's just a massive genre of stuff that you build and that you're into. Yeah. Is, it's so a, I'm going to press you on this one. You're, okay. you're going to answer this fucking question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, man. Um, you don't have a dream car, nothing that you've always wanted to build? All-wheel drive K car. Yeah. That'd so be you cool. built a T-bucket, so that's probably off the right. list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. I got that text from you, Phil. Whenever I, I think I posted a picture of my white roadster once, and you were like, Wow, man, you got your walker, too, so you can go to the NSRA <laughs> show. <laughs> Phil, Phil's is easy. He wants to have a like a, a group venture of Mopar and Miata <laughs> you know, to, to do, like, a Hellcat, like a legit OEM Hellcat, Hellcat Miata. Miata, yeah. 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 yeah, that'd be pretty cool. With, yeah. <laughs> with proper like weight distribution. Yeah, you well, know, 50 not, 50. Right. Yeah, you got to. Retractable Why you? hard top. Yeah, yeah, yeah retractable That's hard top. That'd be cool. A gentleman's roadster. <laughs> I'm, tr- I'm trying, Jeremy. I can't. I, I, I'm trying to think of <laughs> the car that I would really want to do. Um, it could be a bike. It could be a boat. Yeah, it could yeah. be a plane. Actually, actually now that, that you say it that, if it goes that way, um, one one thing that I I I have on a list that I've I'd always want to do and tackle is I'd like to like you know the, the resto mod word but resto mod a like a old Chris Craft yeah that'd be that'd be cool that'd be really badass yeah. so just uh, not a real big one just uh, something that's kind of sporty but uh, put a cool engine in it and and uh, something that'd sound good a little rowdy hot rod it a little bit and then uh, but make it just killer slick and Nice chrome on it and all that stuff. So, because I, I really appreciate those types of boats. It don't have to be a Chris Craft, but any type so I, of wooden boat. So, I've been there and done that. Yeah. On a, on a Much seven. cheaper to buy a 200 foot yep. super yacht. That's so, right. Yeah. <laughs> I did I did it on a uh, 71 Magnum uh, Sport, 27 Sport. I, I pulled did you it. come by the I shop? I came by your that? shop. Yeah. You remember yeah. that? That was like <clears throat> six or seven years ago, pulling yeah. it back from Florida. And just like Phil said, I would advise you to go buy a 70-foot Hatteras, uh, you know, brand new. Brand new. The, cab, it's like, way less painful. Fish, you know, yeah. you name it. Get he the just big sent diesels. me one yesterday. He says, oh, I found a 28 uh, a Magnum Maltese. What do you think about buying it? I sent him back a new 50-foot cigarette Marauder that was $1.6 million. Yeah. Just buy this. It's going to be a yeah, lot cheaper. Least, yeah. hey, but at least I agreed. I said you're probably right. Yeah, yeah. wouldn't be as cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you sent me one... I I'm pretty sure it was you a while back. Stancraft out of Idaho. Yes, they built yeah, some. Of, yeah, they do. Awesome, yeah. badass, yeah. like 
one-off wood boats, kind of in that Criff Craft style, they but do. a lot of hot rod yep. flair to them. Yeah, they are. They're, they're, that's a really good one. And then uh, another one that I've, I've, you know, Van Dam boats up in northern Michigan. They're up in, I, I think, Travers or somewhere. But, uh, yeah, they do a really nice boat as well. So, yeah. So how about, what if we cut Phil out? Like, forget what Phil's talking about because he's just <laughs> speaking <laughs> nonsense over there. Yeah. I think he's pretty whiskey drunk at the moment. <laughs> we, You and I buy this 28... It's a 1970. It's a Magnum okay. Maltese. It's like an iconic boat. It's got yeah. s- the, the most gorgeous lines you've ever seen. Where's, I'd have let's, to. I can't, let's let's yeah. build it. Okay. It's, let's do it. Yeah. Show me. You how machine the whole. I can. Okay. I can pull it. <laughs> the <laughs> entire <laughs> thing. Yeah. That that remind. I saw. A, I don't know. Some, actually, my brother-in-law, uh, him and my sister live down in Melbourne, but they do sailing down there, and uh, yeah, they no. sent me a. They no. They sent me a a, a post somewhere of this. Uh, what's what's the big sailing race the uh, the cup thing or what what is that? Yeah, not into yeah. Look, look at all which, those hot rodders with sailing. Yeah, the sophisticated yeah. stuff. Which one is but, it, Jeremy? Here's a. Uh, what's the twenty eight Maltese? So here, this is an original marketing ad for it. But anyway, Phil, they were C and Cing with a robot the hull on that whole boat to to make the mold for the carbon hull eventually. Shit. It was pretty cool. It was, it was, I geeked out about that pretty. It was just amazing the scale of it, but it was cool. Yeah, so it can be machined. <laughs> sure. Dude, we can machine Ass bag this over one. here. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's get all aboard on that. Let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, those are badass boats. Okay, yeah, it's yeah, a done so deal. Here we are. Yeah. Done. All we're right. doing, we're doing, we're we got the commitment. Done. It's... Hey, dude. Glass is half full. That means the Magnum Miata is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make you a shifter handle for it, Phil. Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, you probably got to do we, that. Out of, we, it's got to be like Delrin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, light, light, yeah, light, light. Right. yeah. I'll make you, sure. It you says Phil's you can make Miata. On it. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Do you take the? Yeah. Do you take? The door panels and like the passenger side headlight out of it when you road race it. I don't, oh, wait, own I don't know a Miata. I don't know what the weight distribution is on them. Phil obviously does. <laughs> hey. Anyway, they say it takes a more of a man to drive an underpowered car fast than it takes a fast car fast. You can get a good look at a steak by <laughs> sticking your head up a butcher's ass. Take his word for it. Uh. We want a wild, wildest, craziest SEMA story. <laughs> That's not Josh's. <laughs> That's not I, Josh's. <laughs> Other than Josh's. Wildest, craziest cr- SEMA story. Oh, my gosh. And, I mean, you can take your time to think. They're going to edit out all the pauses. Yeah, so yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah they oh, could edit man, out so the, many. You're not under the gun. There has, there has to be either a build-up to or something after or... Yeah, there's... Um, Trying to think of anything that got damaged before we got in there, and they had to figure out how to fix it. There that's, has been those times that's I just never can't happened remember. before, yeah, right? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> gosh, I don't know. Um, as far as moving the car in or anything, I I don't know. I guess the the craziest thing was the year we had the Maverick there, and it just it. Kept you can winning. go ahead and say it. It yeah, just it, dominated. Yeah, it just, well, just fucking won it. Every no, it, one it, it, SEMA. It, Jimmy and I both, um, Jimmy Shaw being the owner, him and I both were like, man, I just can't believe it's it's doing this well there. So I it remember was more it. shocked cool. that you built a Maverick. Right. Yeah, yeah. I remember me too. it doing well, there, <clears throat> like with everything, because we brought a uh, like it was kind of our banner car. It was a wide body. 70 Camaro uh, Road Rage. How may have seen it in your rear view mirror. We, uh, <laughs> I mean, we gave that thing everything we everything we had. We really pulled out all the stops. But uh, That's been one of my favorite cars. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, the uh, Maverick just <laughs> <laughs> fucking dominated. <laughs> like, every, we get, we get uh, like a Gran Turismo nomination. Oh, I'm like, this is awesome, this car. Like, we have a chance to win. Nope. <laughs> Not winning that. <laughs> Street machine of the year? Uh, nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. We, like, if you stop and think about that, that we literally, for like a year and a half, we got our ass 
handed to us. Yeah, it's completely handed to us by, I a, got a, by I got a, a good, maverick. I got a good story <laughs> a on that one. So we <laughs> we, we all get those, Jeremy. <laughs> Here's mine. So we get in. Uh, so we go to Detroit with Steve Tracy and Chromezilla 32 Ford, and he's plated. I mean, when I picked the chassis, or when I took the chassis back up out of his place, because we put it, we assembled it together there because everything was chrome. The yeah. only thing that was not chrome on the drive line, in the, in the entire chassis were the tires, the belt, and the throttle bodies. And the throttle bodies were painted a candy color, and uh, so we roll that in the trailer. But anyway, so we got that up there, and it's all chrome and everything else, and. And then here comes Chip in <laughs> with his camera crew and and uh, impressions, you know, oh, that car. Yeah. And so it was, a, it was an incredible Chip, car. Chip who? And, Chip yeah. who? <laughs> Chip Foos. Oh, I, <laughs> so, yeah. not, I'm not aware. Is he a, <laughs> he's a car builder. Yeah. <laughs> right. In Chip's defense, it wasn't a Maverick. You're right. You're right. It was. <laughs> That's true. But no, it gets better. So we're so we're up there and 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 I know in my heart I was like, okay, yeah, that's cool. But um, you know, and it that was the car that deserved to win that year. And and um, so then we go to the next show. Well, he uh, Chip comes in with the car, and so Steve and I started calling that car in seven impressions. We called it Depressions because <laughs> we, we followed it around that whole year, and it won everything. <laughs> everything. Uh, it was funny. So yeah, yeah. So yeah. So you can nickname the Maverick something. You know, yeah, I don't know. Phil's good at something at thinking of that shit. Think so. something. Yeah, we were second fiddle to that thing everywhere. <laughs> everywhere we went. Oh, <laughs> uh, it was a bitching car though. Thank you. Very cool car. It was a fun car. How it fast did that car. go? It was two oh two and some change and a standing mile. So. Damn. Now that's nerve wracking. Yeah, yeah. Because Jimmy was driving it, and Jimmy's a wild man, and, and and he'll drive them fast, and and he'll drive them all over too. He uses his his stuff, and and uh, but <clears throat> that he'd he'd take off on that line, and and I'd just, just listen to it. I'd hear every. I'd know you know you know what's turning. And everything that's going on in there, and you're you're imagining it all, <laughs> and you're like, man, I you're hope you're thinking so. a worst case scenario. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it is, and it's just like, man. And then hoping that low car shifter doesn't skip into. That's right. <laughs> into <laughs> reverse. <neutral. laughs> uh, no, we were. <clears throat> that, it, it did. It did really well. It took us about six, seven tries to to, to get it to get it that day. So. And uh, it, it, man, what a fun time! That's that That's was fun. a that was outside of the car show, the typical car show thing too that we did. It was something fun, and man, my gosh, that was a good time. So, I'd looking be, back at it, I'd would be, be interested fun. in doing that with the the Grand National. Yeah, yeah, I you should. Be, that, that would be that, a good car that, to that do. That car with. makes that kind of power. We yep. could set the gears up to yep. do it with. Yeah, and the thing is, it's it's really cool there too because you're. Um, you're out on this huge runway. We we went to uh, I think it's Blythe Smith, Arkansas, and there's not a lot of people there. It's not like the Texas Mile yeah. where you're just hammered up, which I haven't been to that, so I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of talking out of my ass here, but the, it's you know it seems like they're just you you got to hurry up and get up there and be going, or you miss your turn. This one it really didn't matter when you're ready, pull up there, and you may have had to wait for one run in front of you, so. We would go. We go back. We had um, Mark Bowler there helping us, uh, you know, tuning in on the trans, and um, <clears throat> uh, David um, um, over at uh, uh, shit. Uh, I'm sorry. Hopefully they can edit this. Yeah, like brain they fart out. all that shit. Yeah, yeah. But at uh, um, uh, Comp Cams, we had um, <clears throat> David at Comp Cams there, and he was he was doing all the tuning on the engine and so forth, and and doing all the data logging each run, and we, uh, I gotta, I gotta back up if we've got time. I gotta yeah. tell the story about the. Uh, so we pull up into tech, and yeah. so we pull the car up into tech, and they're coming over to look at, it, and I'm nervous as hell, and <clears throat> I'll be damned if at the same damn time the big red Camaro they oh, push boy. that thing over there, into tech at the same time right next to the Maverick. I'm like, gosh, <laughs> I mean, because these guys are the real deal. They're they're. They're serious they, speed they, guys. They've been at that since like the eighties. I know, I know, and it's crazy, uh, and it's cool. It's cool what they do with it, and cool people, and their their whole group are just amazing people. And and we get to talking with one of the main guys that I forget his name right now, but um, 
he he goes, you know, and we we Jimmy set the goal. He's like, I want to go two hundred with this thing. So those guys come over there and they were like, Hey man, how fast are you thinking you're gonna go with it? And I'm like, I don't, you know, if we're gonna try for one sixty. Hopefully, if it gets over that and it's good, we're we're gonna keep going. Go. <laughs> I didn't want to tell him, you know, <laughs> hey, I'm gonna go two hundred with this thing, and uh, um. We, so he goes, well, if you get up above 160, he said, kind of, we just got the big red out of the arrow, you know, out of out of the wind tunnel, checking the arrow on it. And he said, the sail panels are similar to what's on that Maverick. So he said, you might need a little more wing on the downforce for the, for the back of it. So um, just tell him to be careful once he gets above 160 and and make sure the car's handling okay. You know, no, no air is getting under it. And I said, okay, well, that's cool. And, and they like the car. Um <clears throat> so we get back out and uh jimmy goes and does his first safety run to get his licensing to get up there and his couple runs. so he gets his first real run to go and he he just we he just hammers on it <laughs> and he pulls a 183 out <laughs> <laughs> Damn. and we're like how's how did you know and he comes back and he just gets out of the car and he goes and sits down and you know we're asking him and everybody's plugging into it and we see it and so, and we see the data log on it, and the damn, we heard the car, it flared, you know, it, it didn't flare, it just spun the wheels, and then he let off, and then he laid into it again, and it was going, but um, the damn throttle position was the funniest one. Every run was max straight, and then it'd dip a little, where it started spinning, he'd <laughs> let out, and then it was just max. And it was a perfectly <laughs> straight line all the way the whole mile. He was just going and, for it. And we're like, fuck, Jimmy, you're going <laughs> to so you're after it. And so then about four or five more runs, and we, we ended up hitting the, the 200 mark. But And it was funny, too. It was pretty cool because Mark Bowler was there, and he was adjust, adjusting the shifts because we were running out of gear is what was happening. So he was adjusting the shifts to get us to that. 200 because from 190 193 194 it it took you know another three or four runs to get to the 200 so we get to the and but he was telling or i remember standing with mark at that end and he was counting the shifts and he was like okay he's gonna get 200 on that one and i'll be damned he it, did, was, huh? it shifted into fourth early enough oh. before the line I've, and uh there it was i've so. got a serious question to ask okay <clears throat> What gauges are in that car? <laughs> They're uh, <laughs> <laughs> some. For some reason, I don't think that's a serious question. It's just the data. Uh, are from, you questioning the credibility of this? I thought it, <laughs> the speed. Yeah. I, I, they, oh, they, the gauges. No, it, the gauges weren't timing, and it. it was their they, gauges. Yeah, they documented yeah. this. So stuff. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna uh, call foul if it was a yeah yeah, yeah. certain cage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was in there. There's no way uh, that car ran two hundred. <laughs> that's a good God, point. Man, no idea how fast we're going. What yeah. RPM? Do we got <laughs> gas or not? But, <laughs> man, we had an awesome we, time. <laughs> we, we've been on this thing for a mile and it's doing seventy six miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's between 30 and 76 the whole time. Just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, good stuff. They'll edit that out. We're all good. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> good. Yeah, right. uh, oh, man. <clears throat> so not classic instruments. Games, right? yes, <laughs> <laughs> Glad we circled back on that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we, were, oh, uh, yeah. we were standing in a group with Bobby Alloway and John and, and those guys and... and uh, you know, we've all die hard with John and that stuff. And I remember Bobby Alloway saying, I can't buy enough ground to make those damn things work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so they can edit that out, too. Yeah, yeah we, we, we edit <laughs> all that stuff. Is, I made a meme that's uh, a cop pulling somebody over. <laughs> and underneath I said, honestly, officer, I have no idea how fast <laughs> I was going. I have classic instruments gauges. <laughs> <laughs> I showed it to Moose. Oh, man. At, at Nashville. <laughs> He goes, oh, that's fucking hilarious. Let me take this. Grabs my phone. John, come on over. you got to check this out. <laughs> oh, shows no. McLeod right there. I'm like, oh, <laughs> fuck. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> oh. So what uh, – sorry, I was – Sorry, I was reading ahead. Cut you that are, out too. Yeah, I was reading ahead. Um, <laughs> what are you working on now? We've talked about everything yeah. past leading up to it. What do you got 
in yeah. the pipe what's coming forward besides the Beamer project? Uh, yeah, we've got a uh, 85 Camaro going together. <laughs> it's nice. pretty high-end build. Well, it's, made, it's Alabama. So. <laughs> well, yeah, it is. <laughs> That's something you've been working on for a little while, right? Yeah, it is. It is. And uh, we've we've made the all the front bumper and rear bumper, you know, got rid of the Enduro stuff and made it out of aluminum and done some gar- carbon stuff with Zach Ingram. And, uh, yeah, so it ought to be a, a pretty good car. I'm excited about it. Be you kind of kept that one under wraps. I yeah, we've been trying to figure out I where to. I seen any little teasers yeah, or anything on trying that. trying to figure out where to debut it at and all that stuff and. And, um, yeah, so we're, we're, uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll let it splash out there somewhere. So the haircut's uh, a little bit of a teaser. Got yeah. That mullet going. Yeah. 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 I got that. <laughs> That's actually, I told Terry, the guy that owns it, Terry, the guy with the Beamer is the one who owns the, that. And, uh, I, I told him in the beginning, I said, my goal on this car is to take the mullet out of it. So I don't know if I'll be able to or not, but <laughs> we're working on it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we got that, and we got a 61, uh, 61 uh, Bel Air, you know, so like the little ducktail top on the uh, flat postcard. Roof, yeah, yeah. Yep. And, that's uh, a, that's yeah, a so cool that. car. I'm a huge oh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of this. We actually own a badass one. It's a it's a, with Impala trim, oh, wow. black and white Survivor original paint, and we've tried selling that to about half a dozen yeah different customers and yeah. nobody bites that's amazing for like I, eight years I, I think awesome. it's the, I love like, those everybody cars, loves yeah. the bubble top yeah but yeah, that yeah. flat roof oh with that little tail oh, off over the back so glass that's badass. cool it is and <clears throat> i'm excited about that we're putting a little small inch ls motor in it but uh don hardy's building it and uh, we're making it we're putting adapters on it and the old air cleaner you know with the two snouts on it yep. gm we made that into the blower hat, so nice. and it's twin turbo. It's not blower, but it's it's the yeah. hat that goes up it. And we're in, so we've uh, Eric Brockmeyer's helped me style the engine bay and stuff to to where we can. Uh, it looks like something GM would have maybe done in the '60s. That's It'd cool. Kind of a cool. I'm excited about that. That's gonna be a really cool car. Nice. And that's got your full IRS fast track chassis welded up underneath it, and that Sweet. car is gonna just it's gonna be a good cruising car. Which I, I hope I can talk Terry into using that one a bunch because it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be fun. Be cool. Not too much horsepower, but it'll uh, <clears throat> be enough to be a lot of fun in that big bodied car. So nice. Cool. Yeah. Is that for my twin brother? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, we met him out at the last. That's uh, right. Road That's right. Tour. Yeah. Yeah. One of the Barrett tours. Yeah. yeah so we've got. Uh, I uh, got that, and then I've got a little '70 Porsche 911 I'm doing for myself. So just kind of hot rodding that a little bit. So, and I'm I'm excited about that. It's kind of something a little fun and a little different too. So I've, I've been wanting to do one of those. That's yeah. a car that interests me just from a like drivability. Yeah, I, th- I think it's going to be a great great car to to drive and um, you know go go rip around with a little bit. But um, I'm putting some fuel injection on it. And, aftermarket stuff there and uh but stock engine stock trans and uh, it's got some race suspension on it and so forth so i'll kind of detune that a little bit to to handle the road better but uh it's, it's gonna be a cool car i, I think it'll be fun that'll be sweet be yeah what's uh what's the most important part of a car built and you first of all you can't say all of it right so paint fit finish unique idea stance you know, horsepower, engine, what, first and foremost, what's the most important part? Uh, probably just straight out, you know, overall st- stance and proportioning is the most important. A very, very close second is usability. Now, that can be usability between how, you know, usability on how the customer is going to use it. That's how I should put that. So if they are going to, if they want it, just as a show dog and make sure it's right in that sense. If they're going to go out and hammer on it on the road. And go 200 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, make sure it does that. So, yeah, yeah, the usability of it. But, yeah. But, again, you know, it, it, uh, you can go fast and <clears throat> stop fast, whatever, but it's got to look good doing it if it don't do that. And that's all I'm at proportions and stance, so for sure. Awesome. Stance has been the uh, – reoccurring theme it's the look man. through the uh yeah. 
Thank goodness Who for you guys ones? building chassis. That's what it's, that's what it's all about. <laughs> Checks in the mail. Yep. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, well, that's part of the wheels make make up a good portion. Yeah, of yeah, they, part of stance. You know, that's what you know. Phil touched on that earlier. You know, some of the cost of some of these crazy wheels we've done been able to do together. Um, but man, you take you take the cost of the wheel versus the cost of the entire build. You know, it's probably a fifth. Or a tenth, a tenth of that cost yeah. on some in some cases, but visually it's probably 40, 50 percent of the oh, yeah. car. Yeah. Yep. You know, so yeah. I didn't want to, you know, throw uh, throw shade on the the cost of the wheel by any means. Yeah, it's just you get a lot of guys that ask and well, yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah, it's yeah. not for everybody, but it's a no, huge no, no. part of the car. And but I, I don't care if they're you know a eight ten thousand dollar set of wheels. You know, you you look at the overall cost versus that and then the what you get out of that yep. is a i'm not trying to sell them or anything else but i've always thought that buying them from budnick and shot back you know or i still do at times but you know even <clears throat> choosing you know full production wheels don't matter what it is if you're going to spend a little bit on them yep. you know that's money well spent so i think I, I think those two go hand in hand in my opinion you've got stance and wheel and tire selection yeah uh like just like jesse said whether it's a stock like production wheel. I mean, you can absolutely massacre a car oh. with wheels and tires. Or you can make a car. You can take a yeah. car, like you can take a 67 Nova that is completely bone stock and put the right, di- like push the envelope a little bit as far as what diameter tire you get underneath it and get the stance right and get the right backspace, the right wheel style. And who cares what else is in it? I mean, it can be stock suspension. You, yeah. It could be a stock motor. It could be a six-cylinder. Nobody yeah, knows. Right. Nobody cares. But it sits right and yeah, has the right wheel. It sits right and has right. the right wheel fitment. It's, there's that's there's a recipe there. That is it's the that's whole it. patina trend, the whole Survivor yeah. Series build, yeah. your dad's truck, your yeah. Galaxy. Right. I mean, that's right. They're original, nothing special, you know, no crazy paint, no crazy body yeah. work or details, but... Yep. How it sits in the right wheel and the way that wheel fits on the car. That's right. That makes it everything. It does. How many miles your dad get on that truck now? He's he's pushing sixty thousand miles on it. Damn. That's in this iteration. You know, that's since we <clears throat> put y'all's chassis under it back in I don't know, that was probably thirteen, two thousand thirteen or so. Fourteen, I think. <clears throat> wow. Sixty thousand miles. Yeah. That's awesome. So it's it's good. We, we I've hammered a Big time in that truck a few times, and it's just it been pulls. hammered or hammered the truck. Oh, no, both. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Clearly, I both. feel like that that truck's always the last thing I see at night before I finally throw on the towel <laughs> and get going. It's like, you know. it's like, oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I laugh at Columbus. We'll come out, and Dad will get pissed. He'll be like, you know, because he'll kind of go in early at times and. And he'll come out, and I'll go out there in the day, see him out in the parking lot, where, <laughs> and he's cleaning shit out of the back of that truck, yeah. you know, from the <laughs> night before. <laughs> he's bitching. Someone Man. slurping bourbon off the top of the cooler. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's not. He's not bitching at night though, and he's no, so, no, no. He's not. Yeah, he <laughs> he forgets he's right there in it all. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, good stuff. Got something, Phil? No. Oh, sorry. I was, I was gonna. I've given you the. Uh, I the appreciate. End. Sorry. <laughs> Favorite. Uh, now we come to the part where we ask the standard questions that we ask every single guest. Okay. Right? Rapid fire. Best car movie and why? Uh, Ford versus Ferrari. Oh, That's a good one. It's a good movie. I think it's hey. just well done, and uh, oh, he's been a huge, huge fan of the F. Are the uh, the Fords? It's cool. Yeah, it was, it was a good movie for a modern day. Yeah, it's the best car movie. It's, it's the best. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. The best modern yeah. day you know, cars. probably an older one would be like Smokey and the Bandit. You know, that's just yeah. humor and I knew I'd mixed get that in Alabama. with the cars. That's, yeah, that's what I was gonna, what I was gonna <laughs> yeah. say. It's the Alabama and yeah, 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 yeah Smokey yeah. and the Bandit. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a drive to work. Dukes yeah, of Hazzard. Right. It <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> but no, they. I mean, for modern era, like you said, they they absolutely they could have it. ruined that movie. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah, they did. They could really yeah, for a car guy watching it. It's, yeah. you can appreciate it absolutely. Uh, first car you owned, and what's a good story about that car, or truck, or yeah tractor? Um, first, first. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it was in Michigan at that time. That's so. right. Yeah, uh, the first car I had was one. Uh, 
dad actually bought it. It was a 67 GMC truck. And, uh, uh, you know, shit, that would have been late 80s. I was going to say, you got a brand new 67. (laughs) (laughs) That makes two of you. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And that truck actually was out of Alabama, so it was a really nice one for Michigan. He brought it back up. It was over by my grandmother's house they found it. And so I lowered it back in the day and painted it and painted everything on it. You know, back then it was just like. Monochrome. Just throw up paint on under the hood, everything. So, and uh, you guys will appreciate this. It was peach colored. Yeah, so it was cool. And then I nice. couldn't afford wheels on it though, but I had back to the stance and tires. I had a set of old aluminum wheels that were on it. <clears throat> I don't even know what they were. I wish I could find a picture of that thing. Cause, but there was, um, uh, you know, I got. Kind of, I felt like I got the right tires on it. It's by accident back then, you know. Yeah. But it, the truck always looked good. It was lowered and. Going after that coin cool. look, right? It was going after that Troy era. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I was yeah. actually. I probably was. Yes, yeah, I mean, because that was that was when Troy was starting to kick off, yeah. and he was doing all that mono, mono, monochrome, monochromic, yeah. whatever, yeah. however they monochromatic. Called it. Yeah. yeah, there you go. And uh, paint it all. Yeah. So, did you yeah. have a matching shirt to go with the truck? No, not then. Matching eyebrows, possibly. Uh, Probably what? the hair was matching. Who fucking... <laughs> trying to. Work that in. That was a, oh. that was a stretch. <laughs> that was yeah. All right, you a got stretch. you got me now because uh, what the fuck is he talking about eyebrows? But then I remember Josh, the I stories mean, with uh, the bleached eyebrows. Well, the, the bleached, no, they were on? they were orange orange eyebrows. Late nineties, early two uh, yeah, thousands. Yeah, that yeah. was the uh, was in the uh, import in, in the import scene a little yeah. bit. It was, kind of a big deal traveling around you know you stuff. weren't a big deal at all yeah, was, <laughs> yeah. i had an orange had an you orange were the car. smallest deal <laughs> <laughs> i was no deal yeah. uh, i'd like to thank jody henning for supplying the picture yeah, my, <laughs> for this my wife seen the picture my wife oh, has got it <laughs> you have it on your phone i gotta see of this course shit. phil has it <laughs> my, my wife has given up it. way too much oh, information uh, yeah yeah so i had i had an orange car and uh matching eyebrows matching eyebrows matching mm-hmm. hair matching shirt you know wow. it was kind of that's a, cool yeah it was yeah i thought it was i thought Dude, it was cool. I, that sucks yeah. <laughs> that, that is that's, like seriously borderline grounds jesse's, for termination <laughs> like you're th- jesse's talking about the beginning of his career it's like oh yeah it's just like winning riddler awards you know i was like working with paul atkins and you know bobby alloway and here you're talking about your honda and you had orange eyebrows <laughs> 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 That's the worst <laughs> I, I hate beginning you. of the career. <laughs> I hate ever. you both. <laughs> Miata sounds pretty fucking cool now, yeah. doesn't it? Dude, I no. Would literally no, the be, Miata hey, doesn't sound no, cool. No, 100%, no. You're, I, you're crazy. I would literally yeah. be riding shotgun in, in a Miata. Miata <laughs> you would like with a small like, like like a Yorkie or something <laughs> petting it. You know, <laughs> then I would having orange eyebrows <laughs> and, and a, a leopard with, print. Yeah, with my Honda at a car show. <laughs> <laughs> you just literally made the Miata cool. You realize that? <laughs> Absolutely not. We're talking about modern day Miata, and we're talking about ninety nine hey, hey, rave God. era. Josh, people don't forget. <laughs> no, people do not. Hey, forget. I will. It's- I will take. I will. I will stand by my right. life choices in nineteen ninety nine. <laughs> okay. To 2001. I can't find the picture. Because it doesn't exist. It <laughs> exists. <laughs> All right, we're old we're moving on. Sorry, we've got a, we've got an episode to run here. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Time is... <laughs> we'll post it on the video. It... <laughs> Absolutely, we will. Post we'll it. Find it. We'll post it. I'm texting Jody right now. <laughs> what uh? What's your favorite car show? And this is not television show. This is shows that you go to. Um, you've been to a lot of shows. We've all been to a lot of shows. Out of all the shows, what's your what's your favorite one? One you look forward to every year? Uh, it's it's always been SEMA, I guess. It's always uh, you get to see all the new stuff there. Kind of the Super Bowl. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it also kicks but off the year. It does. Yeah, that's it, what's you're weird. Right, you're right. And and um, you know, it's not just a good guy show or it's not just NSRA show or Detroit or Amber or something like that. It's, you know, you get all types of stuff there. And I think that's what I like about it. It goes back to me just liking all the different weird stuff. So, and it's, and I get to see all that there and that's probably my favorite show. 
What question do you get most from customers? Out of all the years, something that's a standard that every customer asks, or most of the customers ask. Yeah. Gosh, I don't know. When's it going to be done? <laughs> Actually, <yeah. laughs> that's a good one, Jeremy. Yeah, that's yeah. industry wide. <laughs> yeah, that's industry wide. Uh, yeah, pro- uh, that, that's probably it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to but go there, back. Uh, honestly, that's <clears throat> that, sh- that goes to. There's a couple of other industries that would be that way, but yeah. as a whole, <clears throat> what other what other industries are guys like? This is something I do not need. However. How right. fast can I get it? Yeah, you don't do that. Yeah, yeah. you don't yeah, do that yeah. on your like your your appliances. That's right. You know, you don't do that on really any other thing. You yeah, know, you're right. maybe a boat, maybe something. You know, it's an extracurricular activity, but this is something that you absolutely do no, not no, need no. for anything. And you're like, <clears throat> I I can't wait another day. Yeah. How how long is it going to take? Tin foil's been around my eyebrows for two hours. When can I take it <laughs> off? I want to see this orange. The bleach, right. the bleach is running into my eyes. <laughs> oh, it took, it took you know, how many? Chandler is t- going to be so busy on this one. <laughs> it took how many episodes for you to divert from the Miata over to yeah. the Civic? It just came he, to me. Yeah. He was working this hard too because we he went was. after the Hummer and it didn't stay. No, it no, didn't no, stay. No, That's fine. I was backing off the Miata too. Yeah, well, it now, seemed like it. And we gave you a two-episode break. Yeah, <laughs> it's on now. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to do the next episode from inside of a Miata. <laughs> the, uh, you got something? No, I was oh. just looking and keep making, making noises. Like you might say something. <laughs> well, Jesse, okay. honest. A couple of them that we didn't ask the standard ones. Um, how many Riddler trophies do you have? <laughs> this isn't a standard uh, question. <laughs> no, you don't, yeah. most, most people most, say zero. <laughs> yeah, most guests have none, uh, including us. Oh, God. have zero. Just two, Phil. Just two? Just two. Humble. Okay. Just two. Such a humble guy. <laughs> Edit that part out, too. <laughs> uh, Jesse, it's been awesome. This is normally the time where we say goodbye to our guests, but however, yeah. since you're here in studio, yeah, you yeah. get to ride along for okay. the rest of the show. Let's do it. Through our next segment. Jesse, since you're here with us, you get to enjoy the glove box. That is where <laughs> we... T- yeah. <laughs> that sounds horrible. <laughs> he gets, That's nothing like yeah. a prison person. <laughs> <laughs> That's where my <laughs> mind went. <laughs> We, we all you enjoy Josh's glove box. <laughs> we, we all take turns uh, putting things in your glove box. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, Open another bottle, Phil. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we just killed that one. So. <laughs> uh, well, now it's time for the glove box, where we talk about some of our new cool gear, guns, EDC shit, whiskey, and other stuff that we're into. So. We're going to crack it off right with you. What do you have in your pockets right now? You've got to do a pocket <laughs> dump and tell us. Now we get to actually see because it's right here yeah, in front you of us. Yeah, see it. There yeah. could be no No bullshit. making it up. Yeah. <laughs> we got a dually, or not dually anymore, three-quarter ton truck. Is that keys. chapstick? Oh. Huskies, little bottle of whiskey. <laughs> he went, he's he went got, a, a, bottle he's of got a roadie. <laughs> he's got a roadie. <laughs> and a wallet. <laughs> what is what is that whiskey? I don't know. They give it to us at the show a little bit ago. Oh. <laughs> and my oh, what are you packing? Amazing uh, Benchmade knife Kinnick, that I actually Kinnick. received, I believe, from you two. Nice. Back Wait. whenever I helped with uh, <clears throat> there's a fuse blowing on one of your Nashville customers. When yeah, we were up there. So <laughs> and then you guys sent me this in a hat, and I've had it every day since. So. Oh, it's yeah, awesome. it's a good knife. I forgot about that. Yeah, it's very cool. It's good. That's what friends are for. That's the beauty of this industry is that, yeah. uh, you know, all of us, we've got cars that are all over the country. Yeah. And things go wrong. That's right. But it's great to have good friends and people yeah. you can trust. Yep. And uh, 
Yeah, this is a rad knife. This was well worth a, a, a blown <laughs> fuse. For, yeah, yeah definitely. Cool, yeah, it's very cool. So I know this is a little out of order, but I'm going to have to do a little uh, whiskey. Not a review since I haven't open tasted it. it. Oh, we can open it. We got to open it. Hey, we we'll review everybody's, it. Everybody's, everybody's pretty much empty All right, we're going to take point. a sip of this. So this is... Unless this Jesse's is saving that. Kinnick Kinnick Mm-mm. Whiskey from uh, Great Lakes Distillery. Handcrafted small batch. A blend of American whiskeys from the Mama Tried Motorcycle Show. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin, this weekend, blended, distilled, and bottled by Great Lakes Distillery, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, greatlakesdistillery.com. It is as good as gold, as they hmm. say on the back. Kinnick, Kinnick. So, so here's the problem. The we just <clears throat> cracked the seal on a Weller Special Reserve bottle, mm-hmm. and we also finished a Weller Special <laughs> Reserve bottle. So we're moving into a Kinnick. <laughs> <laughs> In a in a small plastic travel bottle. <laughs> so, this is gonna be our first group whiskey review. Yeah. It smells like Jack Daniels mixed with corn syrup. <laughs> Maybe. It's a departure from the Weller. It's, a, it's definitely a departure it's, from the Weller. <laughs> I will say that. <laughs> mm. It's drinkable. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's good. It's got a lot yeah. of corn. Yeah, corn taste mm. to it. Flavor. Mm. To it's it. got that very yeah. It's got that very fresh young taste to it, but it's one to ten. Let's go around the. Room. I'll tell you what. It's drinkable if you drink it fast. There you go. It's a Jeremy, good shooter. One to ten. Ten being the highest. Kinnick, Kinnick. Yeah, it's the same thing every every week. <laughs> Where's Jack Daniels at in the? We haven't reviewed Jack Daniels. If you were to place it somewhere, probably uh, two and a half. Two point six. <laughs> Phil. Yep. Two point six. Mm-hmm. I. Uh, that's. Uh... I'll fall in line with that. That's a that's a two six. <laughs> yeah. You all know what more. Way more than I do about it. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to fall in line there, too. We appreciate you bringing it and then Dude, shitting all over it. it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I uh, will I will say that's probably one of the greatest things from, from a guest pocket dump that we've had yet. That was an honest pocket dump. It too. was. It's not like he just came back <laughs> no, from whiskey he, because he of the name. <laughs> he literally came from a bike show where they handed him yeah, a yeah. mini yeah. bottle of whiskey. And it was in my pocket. <laughs> Uh, what's uh what's in your pocket tonight, Jeremy? You know, other than the usual, um, you know, the wallet, the money clip. I packed something special. Get a little today. something special. Yeah. I've got something special. I mix up the knife like legitimately. I this is almost a daily. Deal. Is that a thirty six inch katana sword? No, this is not. But this could lead into a thirty six inch katana sword because I I want all you guys to feast your eyes. <laughs> oh on this. my lord. Okay, this is a Dale Earnhardt. This is not... Hold that up for the camera so the camera okay. can see. Although you may think that this is 24 karat gold plate, like solid gold, it's I, not. I, I'm really convinced we're going to get a roll so, tied out of him tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Take a look at that. Whoa. Would you, Whoa. Would you feast your eyes on that? I, this was <laughs> That gifted. wins the knife game. <laughs> it does. This, this was gifted to me by my brother-in-law, Kyle Blanis. Can we get a silent lap three? <laughs> <laughs> You know, Dale Earnhardt, hey, Dale Earnhardt, you talk Raise about, hell, praise Dale. You, you, you talk about Jesse driving a car, Fred, Dale Earnhardt drive a race car 200 mile an hour. Yeah. All right? Yeah. In circles, hey, not all, in a straight line. All day long. He don't take all a break. Day. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so Kyle, after listening to the first episode, he gifted me this for letting him borrow the dually, uh, haul a toolbox, borrow a trailer, haul a toolbox, and he stopped at a truck stop. So I'm thinking that this... We're going to have to talk to the Ironclad guys, but I want this to lead to a new segment. Since we have a knife in our pocket yeah. on basically every episode, this is new. This is going to be, I'm naming it tonight, Truck Stop Treasures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right? That is good. What can you find that is worthy We've of got to alternate. in your pocket? We've got to alternate each episode. Somebody's got to bring a Truck yeah. Stop Treasure. we got to go to Truck Stops. Yeah. Yeah. Truck stop treasures. Let's see. You can you buy multiple items at a truck stop. Okay. We got to see what this thing does. We got to get on the road again. It's kind of what I'm saying. Like, yeah, we do need for to. For whatever reason, this, oh, it's because that's his, I'm not a NASCAR guy. It says good rent service. Let's see what it does. You're doing a paper, paper test? Paper test. Yeah. 
Oh, it will not breach the paper. No, that's it that's will. folding the paper. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there it goes. goes. There it goes. Oh, it gets through it. Not well. No. More of a tear. A Dale knife's not a cutting knife. That's a stabbing knife. That's a knife for going fast. Yeah, yeah. that is. It belongs up on the wall next to your I plate. So. Actually, actually that's just a stature. Feel the heft of that thing. <laughs> Would you? Who wants to talk? Give that. My gosh. Yeah, that feels like a high. I end feel piece. like a winner. Yeah. In that <laughs> my hand. Yeah. I do. Wow. That's not bad for seven ninety five. That's a lot of knife for seven ninety five. Yeah. Can I snap it? <laughs> Go ahead, snap it. I like the grip on it. <laughs> Tell you what, right there, that that brings me back. It's not gonna snap. It's not gonna <laughs> snap. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, no ball bearings in there. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is a nice <laughs> knife. Yeah. Pass that around. I think if, if you were ever in an altercation, you're. Better bet is to throw that at somebody <laughs> with, with the blade close than it is to stab somebody. Thing weighs about thirty pounds. Or use it as a set of brass. Knuckles. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, it's brass put it in it's your an extra hand weight. And you just <laughs> slug somebody. Just pound away on them. Yeah. Or you just show it to them. Anybody but, that's got yeah, a Dale, yeah. that's got that a Dale Earnhardt knife. Yeah. 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 You, you don't fuck with that. You don't fuck with that. No. If you're I, in the South, you can just show it to them and they'd be like, "Oh, sure, man, you're a fan. I'm sorry, you're a fan." Three. I think in honor of Kyle, we this is a unit of a knife. Oh, 100%. That's, that's a, a unit. unit. Yeah, it's a unit of <laughs> yeah. a knife. Phil, what do you got in your pocket tonight? Ah, same shit. I changed up my knife. You did? Yep. Going with a... Uh, little OTF. little OTF Benchmade Infidel. Hang on. Get that close to the mic. Whoa. Oh. It's got some yank to yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> that sucker's got, that sucker's got <laughs> some snap. Yeah. Yeah. Rock this one for know, two, three years old. Tell you what, Benchmade, Benchmade is yeah. becoming a uh, definitely a, like, a standard in the, in the. Uh, I like the Benchmade. The OTFs, their action is so super good. smooth. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy how it's both ways. Yeah, they got good action on them. Nice. That's a nice little unit. I, I got to tell you, that might be a step up from the Dale Earnhardt knife. <laughs> <laughs> in function, not in form. In function, yeah. Which uh, which wallet are you rocking today? I know you got the uh, five pack from Amazon that you're trying out. So what are we uh, still rocking the same one from yesterday? Are you? I'm liking it. I'm liking still it. trying to make it stick. Yeah. Uh, I am. I came here a little empty. I've got uh, I've got keys and wallet is sitting on the table because it's still the dad wallet until so big, I have to alleviate my back and I haven't changed out. I'm still this week. I'm rocking the Protec. I'm rocking the Protec Godfather. You want to hear that snap again? Snap it again. I know everybody I likes gets, to hear I never get sick of hearing it. <laughs> yeah. That's uh What? Can I ask a question, an honest question? Yeah. All right. What happened to the fucking piece you, you've been packing every day for the past several years? Is that not a part of your carry anymore? Oh, the gun? Yeah. Oh, I just didn't feel like talking about it. It's, bringing on it up. You, it's on your person. Yeah. Well, today it's not on me, actually. Oh. It's in yeah. him today. It's in me. Well, I, I just, I just, honestly, I felt like it was probably... I mean, you weren't carrying, so I wasn't going to be the only one carrying or, or the only one talking about carrying. You can't carry in jeans like these. <laughs> Where are you going to put that fucking thing? <laughs> it's it Historically, it's been the uh, Springfield XDS and forty five caliber, but lately it's been the uh, the new SIG M17. But Or today it's been nothing. Today it's been nothing. But when you're rocking the uh, Protec Godfather, I mean, seriously. Do you need a gun? Who's going to fuck with a gold blade? <laughs> right. It's a godfather. It's a stiletto blade. Everybody check it out. This is the the Earnhardt knife something. I'm not taking anything away from it. <laughs> but, I mean, seriously. This is this is Don Corleone's knife. We <clears throat> we have three very high-end blades here tonight, but I got to tell you that at a fraction of the cost, I think the Earnhardt knife takes the cake. It makes a bigger statement. It does. Yeah. It does. That's I got to go with that too. Hey, you came. You came with the heavy, with the big guns tonight. <laughs> That's fine. Not a big deal. One thing I know we will have to revisit is uh, Miata's coming hard. Future episodes, and we're gonna have to step the knife game up because you yeah. you crushed it tonight. It's been elevated. Uh, we touched on this just a little bit, but for a for full review, what are we drinking tonight? Drinking some Weller Special Reserve, right? Yep, we sure are. This is, uh, I would say, unfortunately for most of the listeners, for us, this is fairly easy to get. Um, this is 
probably a standard daily driver for most of us, right? Is that like we're little kind of in rubbing, spurts. rubbing it you in the find nose? It and then you we're, can't. And we're a little spoiled. We have a great, we have a great whiskey connection. Yeah. But for the rest of the world, that's a that's a delicacy. Yeah. But, but the, we uh, we busted it out tonight. That was we popped the cherry on a brand new bottle. And that lasted uh when you got a guy like Jesse Forty five minutes. Man, when you got a guy like Jesse Greening <laughs> coming by, you gotta drink the good stuff. Uh, so that it, guys. you know, we talked about that in the past. That's my that's my go to is if you ask me what my you know, number one like daily driver is, what what do I want to drink? Weller special reserve. So I'm gonna ask you Can I'm you gonna, find that down in Alabama? Weller it's uh, regulated, right? No, How about it's by regulated. you? Do you come, do you yeah. come across that? At all? There's Weller down there, but it's yeah. in that weird shaped round oh, flat the, bottle. Yeah, What's you that get one? the Willet. 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 I'm the, sorry, that's the, yeah, the Willet right. pot that's Willet. still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, one. you get the big like the genie sorry, bottle. Mixing them up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'll have to. You're gonna have to pay. You know, secondary. Um, it's it's regulated. You can get it in a lottery or something. But I'm gonna ask a question here. So, do you two? This is for Phil and Jeremy. Do you two generally like 107, the antique, better than Special Reserve? Or is it just the fact that it's a little bit more rare? I think I enjoy Special Reserve better. Better. It's an easier drinker. I, I do. 107, you kind of feel fancy. Yeah. It's antique. But I, I, harder to find. I, I, for the taste and the drinking, I do like the Special Reserve better. I, I, I mean, call me a pussy, but. You're a pussy. The, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the, uh, you lo- offered it up. The, lo- the lower <laughs> proof on the, on the Special Reserve. So twelve year still it. wins. Oh, Hands twelve down. year. Uh, yeah, we, I didn't even ask that. Yeah, twelve year kill, kicks it all. No, you're right. Twelve twelve year, twelve year kicks all of its ass for sure. But tonight, Weller Special Reserve. We uh, we're used to not having a guest in studio, right? Right. right. So a so a bottle goes differently <laughs> when we've got a, when we've got a guest in studio. <laughs> we're going to have to revisit our uh, whiskey allocations. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. We were hoping you brought up a mason jar or something. Yeah, you should have brought a little bit of clear. You know what? I could have, too. I had some in the cooler at the shop. So just delivered. Not so that ago. old smoky? Yeah. Yeah, right. No, <laughs> no, not that. I think uh, this was made in 55-gallon drums. <laughs> you, should, you wouldn't know it, though. Yeah, you, not barrels in you drums. Knew, you knew you were coming for this podcast, and you didn't bring any clear. Shit, I was, you know how it is. I was in a hurry. Oh, leave. man. There's a lot of shit I forgot. Hey, we're, we've the got the Riddler new... trophy, so I could drink out of it. <laughs> Dude, I, yeah, I went to a uh, super disappointed. Yeah, about I know. People, like we're so accustomed to hanging out with like, you know, guys like Jesse, like Alan, famous people, Bobby. yeah, right. famous people, <laughs> right? That have like real moonshine that's it's readily available. So I go to this moonshine party, right? It's a you know little thing with the local hangout group. And so they they've got like the moonshine. You know that moonshine brand? Yeah, yeah it's the old smoky. Old, old, old smoky. Yeah, yeah. So it's a fucking moonshine party, right? Well, I've got like multiple moonshines mm. to choose from. I've got Real like, moonshine. Yeah, I've got like Alan's moonshine. <laughs> well, maybe some of that was Jesse's moonshine. <laughs> you got clear, so I, I bring it along. Nobody would touch it. Nobody go near it. They they like the moonshine. Probably I brought it out in my neighborhood party. Yeah. Did you bring it out? Yeah. What was how like, was oh that my, received? Oh my the next morning it was not received too well. <laughs> they got a little headache. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's that stuff it's, can be rough. It's funny though, yeah. when you bring out the clear, like you'll have the guys that absolutely do not yeah. want it and maybe will just touch it to their lips, or the guys that'll be like, Oh, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. The ones that keep saying that's not so bad, the next morning they are oh, done. You don't they see are, them. <laughs> you see are, them the, only until the next night. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're done. Yeah. Can we talk about that? Moonshine? Yeah. I mean like edited version, but I mean, I don't know. Like we didn't make it ourselves. Yeah, it's People like, yeah, gave it to us. Yeah, we get I, I got I'm sure it was all bonded it's like, and it's like completely high, taxes paid on it's like it. Like high C. Yeah, Have sure you ever had an ecto cooler? Same kind of thing. <laughs> it's it is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it's close to the same. Uh, and Phil, you've got something else for the glove box that you wanted to share and tell us about. What do you have? I do. I gotta pull this up. Hang on. That Kinnick Kinnick wasn't really good. 
It wasn't the best thing I've ever had. <laughs> it was pretty no, bad. That's the name of it. <laughs> oh, it's actually glass. Is it? Yeah. yeah. See, I bring the good shit. No, this is... <laughs> Dude, it, 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 Even though it was in my pocket. <laughs> it's kid it, kid pocket it. it was warmed in Jesse's pocket. <laughs> That's right. It's so, aged in Jesse's pocket. It's like pocket. a Tootsie Rule. They're better whenever you keep oh, it in your pocket blended. Name so good, you had to use it twice. <laughs> kid it, kid Did anybody that puts good as gold like on their product... Yeah, that's selling. trying too hard. Yeah, well, either that or like they're just confident in their product. <laughs> what do you got, All Phil? Right. So, I got a set of rail covers for uh, an AR from this company called Wux W O O X. Um, cool machined walnut piece, but they have these badass axes. I have. Absolutely no need for an oh, axe. Fucking axe. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm pulling tell them me, up right now. Tell Jesse, me you don't you want one this? of those. I do. I can see it. Oh. <laughs> those are fucking cool as shit. Oh, yeah. no idea what I would use one for. You could throw it. Yeah. You could throw it. I'm with you. It's just like dude, the Volante. No, axes they're like are just barbarian axes. No, I don't know. Look at that Volante right there. It's got oh. custom engraving available. Yeah, the Volante. That was the one that caught my eye. Yeah, that is. What the hell is the matter with you guys? What? Just a, an axe? You have a Dale Earnhardt knife, and you're questioning an axe. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. When we get axes, what are you going to fucking say about it? We've got axes. Nothing, because we have axes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so get it all out now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not that it's anything that no, I would cool. buy. I just want it. It's just the, no, I, really, I don't know, the design, the style. I have what, no I, use for it whatsoever. But They've got really a really cool. cool look. I like their website and the, everything. The Forte. Yeah. Is it Forte? Is that how you pronounce it? With the sheath, they've got they've got knives too. Yeah, they got some badass pocket knives, a little Let carbon me, and wood let's pull, mix. Let's pull Pretty these badass. knives up. Anybody that's listening right now, go ahead and run over to Wux W O O X Store dot com. That way you can kind of uh, search along as we're talking about it. Because let's see, well, they got some cool fixed blades. You don't need a fixed Carb- blade. You're going to cut yourself. <laughs> My mom said I could have one. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, I asked her. <laughs> uh, that uh, Rock sixty two walnut, I like that. It's That's a, f- a good looking, it's a good looking blade. I tell you what, the problem, axes. <laughs> the problem with the <laughs> fixed blade. Tell me they're blade, not cool. Tell no, me they're are, not cool. They are cool. What do you? Um, I agree. There's guys out there that are like real men that are listening to us that are thinking we're fucking crazy right now. I want to carry. There's, a, there's guys who are carrying axes. It's I want to, like, dude. I, I have an axe on me. I want to carry. <laughs> I, I want to carry a fixed blade, um, but I've I've tried it a couple of different times, and you got with the whole sheath that, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Carry that half face blade. It's got that like hard sheath. If you turn it sideways, it's carryable. Is it really? Yeah. On your belt. Yeah. yeah it's That's a big knife. It's probably a, for such probably a like small a, guy. Like a three like inch you. blade. That's not a three inch blade. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you're telling falsehoods now. Uh, I do want to carry, I do want to carry a fixed blade, but it's difficult when you carry it straight. You got you got to turn it sideways because it always just pokes into you. You've ever carried a fixed no. blade? No. It's always been pocket. Yep. You ever carried an axe? No. I don't know anybody <laughs> that's carried an axe. Me neither. <laughs> Out of all fucking people, you're going to throw shade on somebody carrying an axe when you have every single tool known to man under the back seat of the truck. You've, you've got, got a Johnson. Johnson butcher. <laughs> you've got a Johnson bar. You've got a come, come along. Come along. I like to have a lot you, of things. You have that shovel room. that folds out? <laughs> No, I, no I this is all, like, oh. old shit. No, oh, this really? is, he's got, like, three truck. empty so, cans of Coleman propane fuel for, like, a guys, lantern. <laughs> so these guys... And they're empty? Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> no, nice. these guys bust my balls. Jo- they're, they're like, why don't you get a new truck? Josh is like, well, we've got an allocation. You can get a Raptor. I'm like, I don't want a new truck. I like to have, like, a fairly shitty truck because I like to fill the entire back seat with just things. <laughs> so... You've got an entire empty cardboard box in the back seat right now. We couldn't even go to the gym today because there's just one large empty that, that cardboard would, box. That was a rare occurrence. I usually have useful things like <laughs> like floor mats from a VW for no reason. <laughs> oh, dude, I have things like, like all like, the things. Okay, like uh, s- giant steak. Like here, let's go through my my previous truck. Huge steak knife. Don't pick out the cool shit. Go through all of it. Come along. Every single tie-down strap that you can imagine. 
multiple pieces of snow gear, snap-on hats, gloves. Uh, a None neck. that you would consider putting on because they've been there so long. Yeah, but if you needed to, you could. Lulu, Lululemon men's oh, yoga pants. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Dude, I could literally, I could build like a small village <laughs> with the things that were in the back of that truck. Yeah. Laser level... Um, else what the fuck else was back there a shit ton of chip bags empty chip bags <laughs> oh, in the no. center console now when it comes we haven't even touched on snacks when it comes to snacks <laughs> because we've already i don't know that if you know this about jeremy jeremy is definitely <clears throat> a creature of habit but he's also got just about 30 percent curiosity in him <laughs> so there is always going to be the same got to have a drink yep. when, we, when we go to like convenience store or whatever traveling gonna have a drink right and that could vary but there's going to always be the staple. It's either going to be salty or sweet. Savory or sweet. Savory yep, or sweet. Yep. And that's a staple, right? But then there's the third, and that's what we like to call <laughs> the, the wild, wild card. card right? <laughs> and that, he's got to have that third, and it could be salty or sweet, right. you know, savory or sweet. It, but it's going to be something that's just landed here from overseas. <laughs> Like it just got You've never heard of it before. The F you the FDA you ever see it again. The FDA just gave like preliminary approval <laughs> for it to be sold on U.S. soil, and it's probably like the Chicago market as a test market. And this is and it's like something with like a koala bear jumping out of a tree or something. And it's or you're referring you don't to even, koala yummies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea if it's like Phenomenal. if it's like fruity or chocolate. It, right. You have no idea what it is, and that so you'll find there's times where that takes that gamble, and it was obviously a loss, and it was no good. Well, that's just <laughs> still he, in the center still council. In, still <laughs> in. I'll tell you what. Let's put it this way: Whose mm. truck would you rather like? If there's some sort of a there's a world war, there's some situation that happens, and you are in a vehicle. Do you want to be a passenger in Josh's vehicle? That has nothing but a cab scented air freshener. <laughs> or if you want to be black ice. Yeah, it's black ice. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's brand new. It's a beautiful truck. You know, if you put it's, it, if it's, you, it's pristine. It is spotless. Or do you want to be in my vehicle where you have. You could build shelter and you could have there's, sustenance. There's a good chance <laughs> there's a jack in the back of it. There's come alongs, there's knives, there might be nunchucks. He's I mean, trying to butch it up a lot. <laughs> dude, go through I s go through the truck right now and look. I go through it. I will say when you put it into post apocalyptic times, yeah. I would rather be it's, in, in right, your it's truck. It's better to have things right, than I not. could I could sustain myself on, on shitty foreign candies. And all the and, varmint that are in there. Yeah. That you and, can kill and eat. And then create shelter <laughs> from the miscellaneous, you know, boxes and things. Jesse, it's been awesome. Seriously, uh, it has. We ended time, that on guys. a high note. Yeah. yeah, we did, didn't we? I'm hungry now. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to have to go get us something to eat. Yeah. Big thanks to Jesse Greening. Remember, you can learn more about him and his shop by following at Greening Auto Company on Instagram. Thanks again for listening to Oil and Whiskey and Ironclad Original. If you like the show, be sure to leave us a rating and a review down below. If you don't like it, just stop listening or don't leave us a review. We don't really give a shit. <laughs> uh, thanks again to our guest, our guest, Jesse Greening. You can follow us on Instagram at Roadster Shop, and we will see you again next week. Sweet. 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 Great. Thank you, boys. Oh, thanks, Jesse. Yeah, that was awesome.